Welcome to Nimmin Live, the number one place on the internet to learn about YouTube, network with other content creators, and have an awesome time doing it. My name is Nick, and today I'm answering your YouTube questions. So if you have a question about what it is that you are doing on YouTube, there's a form down in the description of the stream right now where you can get your questions um, put into that form and we can get them answered on the stream today. Right now, we've actually got a decent amount of questions in there, but we'll still be able to get through all these on the stream. So get your question in there if you do have something that you would like to know. Um, in addition to that, if you are watching this on the replay, I wanna let you know that we talk about all things related to creating content during this stream. And that comes down to growing your YouTube channel, getting more views, getting more subscribers, getting money. We talk about mindset stuff. We talk about some technical you know, stuff when it comes to YouTube. We talk about the actual process of creating content. Pretty much any problem that you could possibly have as a content creator at some point we typically discuss it you know at one point during these streams so um, make sure that you check the description where we have timestamps that you can skip to you know the the parts of the stream that are the most important to you but before we do um, I do want to let you know that this stream is brought to you by StreamYard which is the live streaming tool that I use to broadcast this every single Saturday at 9 a.m eastern and the reason that I use StreamYard is because one it's easy Two, they do all the heavy lifting for me in the cloud, which means if I have a problem with my stream or my stream goes down or I have a technical problem, StreamYard will keep my live stream open, which since my live stream is open, that means that I won't lose the viewers and I can come back in on my phone, which is great. But StreamYard also makes it really easy to bring guests onto your stream, to add graphics to your screen, and you can even share your screen and show it to the people that are watching your videos like I'm doing right now um, as I'm saying this you know, right now in the stream. So you can use StreamYard, you can try StreamYard for yourself at StreamYard.com. And of course, I've got a direct link to that down in the description as well. And today, normally this isn't the case, but today um, this stream is co-brought to you by TubeSpanner, which is a YouTube workflow tool. TubeSpanner will help you in all of the ways that all the other tools related to YouTube do not. So there's all kinds of really cool features like social bio pages that will help you interconnect all your social accounts. You can share your content directly off of YouTube. So you don't even have to leave YouTube to share your content out to Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Twitter. Um, you can also upload your videos more efficiently through TubeSpanner's Upload Assistant, where you can set a bunch of different um, presets for your descriptions and things like that. You can quickly select videos without having to dig around your YouTube channel to find them. Um, you know, when you're putting them in your descriptions and that sort of thing, they have script writing tools. Um, you can make thumbnails and you can even test your thumbnails to see what they look like compared to other thumbnails on YouTube's homepage and suggested videos. So you can make sure that the thumbnails that you are using are standing out for what it is that you are trying to do and the attention that you're trying to get. But you can also try that at tubespanner.com. You can see the name right up there. So, um, so make sure that you check that out when you get the chance as well, because both of these, TubeSpanner and StreamYard, are awesome tools for YouTube content creators. So make sure that you check those out. So with all that out of the way, I do wanna let you know um, that today I'm like pumped up. You know, we didn't uh, stream last Saturday. Um, so today I'm like super pumped to, you know, get in here to answer your questions. I feel like I have a backlog. Jamie, yes, I do. Um, it's just, we're in the process of kind of, you know, re-signing and all that good stuff. Um, but basically we are, um, um, kind of backlogged, I feel, on questions. So maybe you had a question last week that we weren't able to get to because I didn't stream last week. So this week we are going to, you know, hopefully get you taken care of. So again, if you have a question, make sure that you put it in the form that is down in the description below so we can get you, um, so we can get you all taken care of down here. Jerry's called me a slacker for not streaming last week. Yeah, I mean, I felt that way. You know, I felt that way, but you know, there wasn't anything weird going on. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take a me day and just kind of like hang out and hang out with my girlfriend and relax. So it wasn't anything like crazy or nothing was wrong. I was just, you know, just took a Saturday to enjoy myself, <laughs> you know, in other ways. So, uh, so yeah, so it's all good. So um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and just hop right into the content. If you're just joining the stream, I do wanna let you know we're talking about all things you know related to YouTube. I'm talking about you know growing your channel, getting more views, money, mindset, making content. Um, you know there'll be other questions that come up in this process. But if you have a question specifically, make sure that you get it down in the description. So um, at the form that's down in the description, so we can get it answered on the stream today. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. 
with this very first question, which is from Cato Simple. Cato Simple says they've been on YouTube for, uh, or they upload one time per week or more. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. Brad, Magic Flying Potato, what's up, man? Hope you're doing awesome. Um, the type of channel is Cato Lifestyle and Accountability with product reviews and helpful information, showcasing my own weight loss journey from over 420 pounds. Hey, congratulations to you from you know for coming down from that. And um, the goal of the channel is to be helpful and inspiration to other, others who might feel helpless with their health and weight loss like, like they did. And the question is, with shorts becoming a bigger part of YouTube for us creators, can poor shorts performance hinder overall growth of the channel, including long form content performance? So when it comes to the videos on YouTube, um, everything is treated individually. So live streams are treated individually compared to video content. Um, video content is treated differently compared to YouTube shorts. In fact, with YouTube shorts, um, at least according to a video that Renee Ritchie published on the Creator Insiders YouTube channel, um, not Creator Insiders, I'm sorry, the Creator Liaison YouTube channel, um, they or he mentioned that you can even you know publish shorts on the day of uploads and you're not even going to see an impact there to where if you publish two videos back to back where you might see something so because of that i was like hey let's put this to the test because that's great news so um so you know i did it on a day that i went live and and it had zero impact on the replay for that live stream um, i didn't see a blip of any kind and see a drop of any kind in terms of that short taking away anything now keep in mind that was only one instance if you really want to test something you got to do it more which i'll be doing over time um but but in terms of that first run with that, um, there was no, you know, issue there. So when it comes to YouTube shorts, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and, you know, upload, you know, shorts to your uh, YouTube channel. And that is not going to have a negative impact on any videos that are currently performing, um, you know, on your channel right now. Now, keep in mind when it comes to your shorts, you know, you might, um, you know, have people that are interacting with your shorts and they love your shorts. So you have to make sure that you can still, you know, get people to click on your long form content because if they are really enjoying that and YouTube starts recommending them some of your long form content, you gotta make sure you can pull them in there. So if you are gonna use shorts on your channel, the thing that I recommend is that you um, is that you just make sure that the shorts that you're publishing are in alignment with the content that you typically put out on your channel, or at least in alignment for the audience that you're trying to reach, so that the people that do subscribe from those shorts, if YouTube recommends your content to them later, then in that case, they're still a good fit for that long form content that you have. Because what some people do is they'll try to put like meme type content um, in their shorts, but then they'll offer something different on the channel, and they can't understand why you know one isn't helping the other. So because of that, just make sure that there is alignment there with who it is that you're trying to reach with your uh, content. But that's the first time I've been asked that question. So uh, so thank you for that. Um, next question that we have here is from Synergy the Gamer. Synergy the Gamer uploads every other day. Um, the type of channel that they have is a gaming channel. The goal of the channel is to create valuable content for others who need advice about the game, grow a community to one day have it as a full-time career. And um, the question is, and they say pretty wild, right? No, not at all. That's It's normal, right? Like these days, it's normal for people to come onto YouTube and start uploading content and then say to themselves like, hey, you know, like, uh, you know, I could actually turn this into something right like that's what i did right and and you know as you can see you know it's worked out nicely so um so it's not wild in any way shape or form so you know just figure out what it is that you want if you are trying to go you know full time with this one thing that i do recommend is that you start figuring out the numbers that you have to hit and that doesn't mean like numbers inside of youtube the numbers that you need to hit in terms of financial goals so that you can make sure that you are you know generating what it is that you need from youtube before you take the leap into full time so go ahead and make those goals in terms of like this is what i need to go full time you know plus the additional fees that come along with being self-employed and all that. Um, so go ahead and factor that stuff in. And then from there, start, you know, start reaching for those goals, start putting out content, start figuring out how to, you know, how to, how to get yourself into that position. So um, the uh, question here is, is there any optimal, is there any optimal time to post shorts since they don't target your subscribers and just random viewers? I'm from the US, so would it make sense to have shorts posted at times where I think people would be scrolling through the shorts at that time? Yes. So you're already ahead on that one in terms of, you know, understanding like, hey, when I publish this, it's probably best to do it when the people in the target areas that I'm trying to reach are awake and likely to be on YouTube compared to like, let me publish this quietly while everybody's asleep so nobody will watch it, right? So um, so because of that, yeah, you, it, it's always helpful to publish content um, regardless of what it is when your audience is online. Um, but then you say, how about sharing them externally to content related servers on Discord? Does that hurt the shorts analytics in any way? Lastly, should I give a short time to Flatline before posting another short or does that not matter? And can I post two to three at once? 
So I wouldn't post two to three at once, but I would give them just a little bit of space. Like you can do multiples in a day if you want, um, but I would definitely give them a little bit of space um, when you are publishing your shorts, just for the sake of, you know, just kind of letting them, you know, get in there and just kind of, you know, start to do their thing and then publish one, you know, from there. Um, but I wouldn't just, you know, be like, hey, here's three, I'm going to publish them all at the same time. Um, I would definitely give them um, some space there. But in terms of sharing them to places external, um, since it is a short, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about doing that. Um, but one thing that you can do is if you have previous shorts that you have shared into like Discord or Facebook groups or Reddit or anywhere else that you share stuff, um, if you do have those, then in that particular case, you can go into your traffic sources report and your advanced analytics for your for the particular shorts that you shared over there. And you can actually go and you can see how long people typically typically watch for when they come in from those places. Um, so in order to find this, you go into your advanced analytics for that short. And then from there, um, you would go into your traffic sources report, and then you should see external. If you click onto external, then it's going to show you the different places externally, meaning off of YouTube that you're bringing viewers in from. So what you would do from there, really quick, a quick side note, if that's not clickable, if you don't see external as clickable to where it's a blue link, then in that case, you need to change it from since published to lifetime or vice versa, one of the two. Um, and then once you make that change, then it will it will turn into a hyperlink and you can click into it and then you can go see how people are responding. And one of the reasons that you would wanna do that is you'd wanna do that because if you are sharing your content somewhere, but people are coming in and they're not even watching it for you know a, a decent amount of time, then there's no reason to share it there because the people aren't enjoying the content in the first place when they come over. So that can end up saving you a bunch of time if you realize that, hey, these groups that I'm sharing this in, they're just not responding like I had hoped that they responded. Um, so just make sure that you are keeping track of that when you are you know, sharing uh, elsewhere. So really quick, I just want to take a uh, moment here. We have another community member that just hit 100,000 subscribers on their YouTube channel. Um, let's see here, I'm looking for it so I can pin it on the screen over here, but it's a member message, so I don't think that I, uh, I, don't think that I can. So um, I'm just gonna say it right here. You guys can see it right here in the chat, um, but Learn Spanish World, um, he hit 100,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. He says that, um, hey Nick, thank you, you truly helped me. Um, it feels good, but it's a bit intimidating. What to do now? <laughs> <laughs> Where to now? Um, any tips for those uh, hitting this amazing milestone? First off, oops, nope. First off, high five and fist bump to you for crossing that milestone. You're like now in like the the top tier of YouTube in turn or top tiers of YouTube in terms of you know the place that you know that that few content creators get to. Like it might seem like hey, there's you know all kinds of you know silver play buttons out there, and there is, but there's you know way more people without them. So you have moved into like the upper echelon, so to speak, of uh, YouTube. Now, of course, you know it keeps getting it keeps going up from there, but um, but you know you've moved into you know that that space. So congratulations to you for that because it's it's difficult. It's hard and it takes a lot of work. And in some cases it can take a lot of time as well. So you've done all of the stuff and you've done the thing. So high five and fist bump to you for putting in that work and actually making it happen. Um, but when it comes to uh, what to do next, so first you gotta you know order your play button. So keep an eye out for when the uh, notification you know pops up in your uh, in your uh, creator studio, your YouTube studio. Make sure you keep an eye out for that notification. Once you do, then you just go through their wizard, you fill it out, let them know the name that you want on it, and then they'll mail it out. Um, sometimes that can happen quickly, you know, within a few days. Other times it can take a few weeks. For me, it took over a month for me to actually get that notification. But you know, it, it'll happen you know at different times. Um, but just when you see that, just go through that wizard next. You got to 100,000 subscribers, which means you have enough content in your channel that people have enjoyed to where you can look at the data for all of that content and you can start trying to piece together out of all the content that you have on your channel, like what has been the most effective for you for growth. And then from there, once you piece all of that together, then of course you can start digging into all the stuff, digging into your thumbnails and start really looking for patterns across the thumbnails that people, or the thumbnail and title combinations and topics that people respond to versus the ones they don't respond to. Or even if it's a small percentage, like, hey, people respond to this one just a little bit better, right? When you start noticing those things and you start leveraging them with your channel, then, you know, you can, you know, that you can use that information to grow faster into the future. So because of that, make sure that you are, you know, just analyzing all of the things that got you to 100,000 subscribers, because there are clues all over that in terms of the exact specific things that your audience does and does not respond to, so that you can, you know, just kind of fine tune things a little bit in order to create that, you know, that experience that's as good as possible uh, for them. So again, congratulations to you for hitting the milestone. Congratulations again. Um, huge accomplishment and um, well, well done. 
So um, next up on the list, I love when those come in. Absolutely love when those come in. Actually, you know what? I've got a, uh, I've, I've got a, I've got a song that I have to play for you here really quick. I don't have a video for this yet. Video's coming uh, once I get around to it. But, uh, but, but, but this is for you. When, when people cross 100,000, this is, this is my 100,000 song. I'm not sure if this is going to come through, but we're going to try. And I don't think it is. Hold on. You know what? I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's coming through. I can't hear it, but it might be on my end. Give me one. Give me one second here. I'm just got to make sure that my Bluetooth is on and that I'm connected to my Rodecaster. Oh, I turned up the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. I, th I think I got it now. So this is for you for crossing 100,000. Ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody in the house that just crossed that. a major milestone. I want you to put your hands together for him. I got a little something I want to say. If it's 100, 1,000, 100,000, 1 million, I get the feeling you're elated. Because you've been waiting and counting down all the days and the minutes to hit it. And now you found it. High five and fist bump to you. What you've done is astounding. So be proud of it. Get loud and shout a bit. Dance around like you're out of it. Just feel the sounds of this playing. Banging and bounce around at this. And celebration with you. A standing ovation is what you do. You've done something awesome. So I want to give to you a high five. So high five and fist bump to you again. Huge accomplishment. Congratulations to you. Um, you got the 100,000 song. <laughs> so I think that's like the second time, maybe third time uh, we've uh, played that here during the stream since I've made it. So, uh, so yeah, seriously, though, congratulations to you uh, for, you know, for, uh, for what you accomplished. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. So uh, congratulations. So uh, next up on the, uh, next up on the list here, uh, we've got uh, Camp Brood. Camp Brood. I'm make sure my audio and everything is back to back to normal here. Okay. Um, Camp Brood says that they have a RVing and uh, hiking national parks channel. The goal of the channel is to become a better storyteller and to help others. And the question is, what recommendations do you have for channels that have a majority of their audience based on analytics view the channel on the weekends? Well, if you have, you know, um, if you have most of your viewers viewing your channel on the weekends, then by all means publish on the weekends. If like if you're publishing on like, you know, earlier in the um, in the, you know, in the week, but they're not viewing it until the weekend, then, of course, you'd want to publish it, you know, during the weekend. But if you find that, you know, hey, I only get traction on these when I publish them on the weekend, then by all means, you know, publish them on the weekend. Um, but one thing you can also do is inside of your YouTube analytics, you can go and look and see when your audience is online. So all you have to do for this is once you log in, you go to the audience tab. And if you scroll down that page, you're going to see a little box. with all, It's like a, all this like grid with all these uh, little boxes on it um, with like purple shading on it. Um, in that particular grid, it's going to show you when your audience is most online. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to publish, you know, when they are, you know, like when they're like coming online um, at that particular time. But if you find that it's like, hey, my channel's dead during the week, even when I publish during the week, then in that particular case, if you only get activity on the weekends, then, you know, of course, you would definitely want to make sure that you publish when they are, you know, when you, when you have that activity. But if one thing about the audience tab that is like a little bit interesting is like, let's say that you always publish on a Wednesday, like three o'clock. Then in that particular case, you might see that your Wednesdays are just more active because that's when you typically publish and, you know, all that good stuff. So you might find that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, in most cases, though, like <clears throat> that graph will give you just a, a good indicator of, you know, when you should be publishing your videos. <clears throat> uh, Monkey D. Wade is our next question here. And they do anime manga 
content. Um, the goal of the channel is to build a thriving community. And the question is, I'm burnt out and lost all passion that I have used to create. Um, I thought about switching niches entirely and starting over. Should I use my current channel for this transition or make a new one? Um, so I believe, um, here, give me one second. I'm actually going to look at your channel and just kind of see where you're at right now. And I'll let you know what I would do. Um, so right now you got a thousand subscribers, a thousand people that are into, uh, you know, like anime. Um, it looks like most of your, you know, growth has come from YouTube shorts. So, you know, yeah, right now, um, if, if this was my channel, I would just start a new one. Um, I would just start something fresh and, uh, and, and just start, you know, in the new direction that you're going to, and just leave this one in the event that you decide that you want to, you know, um, come back to it at some time or something like that, just leave it. Um, but you know, I would just stop that one and come back. So, and, and, you know, one thing that I did with my channel, because I stopped this channel for a while back when I first started and I went and worked on another channel for a while. And then I came back to this one. So I did that same exact thing where I was like, Hey, I'm working over on that channel and I'm going to start that one fresh. And then on that particular channel, you know, everything is going to be about that main theme of that channel. And then, uh, once I burned out over there, then I was like, okay, I'm stuck on this YouTube thing. I want to do this. I'm hooked. Like I'm in, but you know, I got to figure out something else that I can make videos about. Cause that stuff was taking too long to make. Um, so then I came back to this channel instead of saying, okay, well, I'm going to pivot that channel and take that channel, you know, in the other direction, I came back here um, and started, you know, um, and started, you know, making the content that I make. Uh, Monkey D. Wade, I think we just did this one. Yes, we did. If you're just joining us, I do want to let you know we're talking about all things related to YouTube. So everybody here is a YouTube content creator. Um, I'm answering questions that are put down on the form that is down in the description. Um, so if you do have a question that, you know, you would like answered, uh, make sure you put it in the form that is down in the description because I'm answering them in the order that they come in. Um, but the next channel says, um, you see here, the channel name says you've been a great source of um, information and you're a credit to the human race. Thank you <laughs> for the kind words. Um, the type of channel is art tutorials. The goal of the channel is to teach art, build a community and get monetized. And the question is, thank you for all you do. I love your content. You're so informative, inspirational. Um, you're a credit to the human race. So thank you. That wasn't a question. It was just a uh, you know statement being made there. So I super appreciate the uh, kind words. Thank you. Um, next up, we have um, Orange Game. Orange Game says they do bi-weekly content. They've been on YouTube for a year or more. They have a gaming channel. How many gamers do we have in here? If you're a gamer, just say, just say me. Um, but the goal of the channel here is building a community and a side income. Um, and the question is, hey, Nick, how are you today? I'm doing great. Hope that you are also doing great. Um, says, I'd like to ask if it's confusing the algorithm to upload content about different genres of games while the main topic of the channel remains gaming. For example, upload about three different genres of games in a week, um, MMORPG, horror racing. So, so one thing with that is you can have, you know, like if you're within the gaming space and, you know, you have like, hey, I'm doing this game, this game, and this game, you can technically do that. And when you do that, you know, you'll have, you know, the people that will respond to this game and people that will respond to this one and this one, and you'll kind of make audiences for each one of those over time. But the downside is, is, you know, for the people that are really engaged in your content, if they get recommended the videos from the other games, but they don't play those types of games, then in that particular case, you know, it can end up working against you if you have like a large amount of people that are into or not into that game, but they're a majority into the other stuff that you do, right? So then you might get that initial lower response, but that doesn't mean that over time, the video won't do well. It just means that right out of the gate for, you know, like out of those three, you're gonna have one that typically performs lower, one that particularly, particularly uh, typically performs higher. So what you wanna do there is, you know, you just have to know when when you publish the one that typically performs lower that you know you're gonna you know possibly get that response until you have some of those that do better and then in that case you'll move it to where the other one will end up performing lower and it'll just be this you know kind of back and forth that you're always playing so what i would recommend is that when you are you know playing different games that you start asking your community in your community feed, start asking them what games they play. But instead of just having an open-ended post to, to where it's like, hey, what other games do you play besides you know this game um, or besides these three games, um, which you can do, and then you can get feedback and you can log all that feedback. But other things that you should do is kind of lead it a little bit. Like these are the games that I wanna play, so I'm gonna ask them which ones they would prefer. And um, you know, out of these three that I love to play, which one you know would they prefer? And then you know, I would do more of those. Um, but you know, when it comes to growing a YouTube channel, you know, you have the like, hey, let me just hone in and try to grow everything as fast as I possibly can um, based on you know the topic of the content, and you know, and I'm just going to go all in on like a game. In some cases, is what people do. And then when they go all in on that one game, then everything about them becomes you know about that game in terms of everybody you know knowing them about that game. Um, but when you 
have the three different types of games that you're playing, one thing that can happen is that, you know, it, in some cases it might be a little bit slower to, to grow unless you, you, unless like one of those pillars ends up doing like really good for you and you have like, you know, really good response you know just a few good videos is all you really need to get like you know good you know a good start um but what can happen is when you are publishing those you know you'll end up growing like one audience that's like really into that and then you know they just won't respond as well to some of the other ones ultimately the big win is if you can get everybody just enjoying you and loving how you play in the game that's like what everybody you know ultimately is trying to go for on youtube but the way the system works like they have to respond based on like topics and things like that at least to get it all started so because of that like if you are just getting started i would start paying attention to like okay out of these three games that i play which one do people typically respond better to? Which one do people typically respond better in terms of watch time? Like how long they'll watch your videos for? Um, which ones do people typically click through at a higher rate? Um, I would start grouping them together inside of your YouTube analytics. So there's a feature called groups um, in your YouTube analytics. I have a short on my channel that shows you um, where, exactly where to find this and, and how to kind of look at the information. But with the grouping feature, um, what I would do is I would say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna group these horror games, these racing games, and then these MMO um, ORPG games. Um, each one of these is gonna be an individual group, and then I'm just gonna start comparing them over time as I publish more videos. So then I can start to get an idea um, as a content set. Okay, people definitely subscribe more for the horror games or the racing games, but I typically get more views from the uh, horror games. And then the MMORPG, um, I typically get higher ad rates for those, right? Um, but I'm not saying that's what you'll see, but when you start comparing them like that, it's gonna start giving you information based on you know the different response and just the different you know things that you can use that information for. So then if you are gonna stay on that path of publishing three different games, then you can start to be strategic about it. And you can say, okay, well, over the course of the next 90 days, if, um, if, if my goal for this next you know 90 days is to just get more subscribers on the channel, then in that case, I'm gonna look at my analytics. I'm gonna see which ones you know, um, typically generate more subscribers uh, you know, as a content set. And then I'm going to, you know, try to make more of those compared to the other ones. Still going to make the other ones, but I'm just going to, you know, kind of maybe double up on the ones that are driving more subscribers so I can hit that goal. Or if it was watch time and you find that like horror games are the ones that drive you more watch time, then in that particular case, then you would say, okay, I'm trying to get into the partner program so I can get monetized from all this. So because of that, I'm going to do more of the horror games for this next 90 days while I'm still on the others, but I'm just gonna, you know, prioritize the horror games so that I can kind of fill that need of needing to get more watch time. So like when you start grouping them together and you start getting that information back on how people respond to each different game, then that helps you kind of plan out like what your schedule is going to be in order to hit very specific goals that you create for yourself, for your YouTube channel based on what you're trying to do. So hopefully that helped. Um, next on our list here, we've got Vexter. Um, Vexter says that uh, they do gaming content as well. Um, the goal of the channel is to be entertaining and helpful in the gaming world. The question is, I have two gaming channels. One is monetized and the other channel is not. I would like to upload the same videos and shorts to both channels. Would this hurt the algorithm? Um, it's actually repetitive content. Um, you can get penalized and you can you actually risk losing both channels um, if, you, if you do that. So you definitely do not want to do that. Super chat. Cheers, Banner. Thank you for the super chat. Super appreciated. I was hoping there'd be a joke attached to that, but it, it looks like uh, no jokes for today. A little, uh, little upset, if I'm honest, that we don't that we don't have a joke. Anybody else here in the chat today feel a little like there's like this big open void that, that there's no joke attached to that? <laughs> Thank you, though, Daniel. Um, next up on our list here, we have uh, Magic Flying Potato. What's going on, Brad? Hope you're doing awesome, my man. Um, uploads when he has time. Um, the type of channel, survival gaming channel that provides help guides, walkthroughs, gameplay, and live streams. The goal of the channel says I'm uploading videos because I enjoy gaming and helping other people out. Um, my goal is to have fun and continue to grow my channel as a side hustle. The question is, I'm planning on doing an unannounced surprise giveaway during a live stream. What is the best and most secure way to collect the information from a user in order to ship merch to them? For example, merch from Spreadshop. Thanks for all that you do um, and help with Nick. Um, see you at Vid Summit. Yes, I love that we're talking about Vid Summit now. It's just in a, I was just in a, in a Facebook uh, conversation um, and we we're talking about that too. We're like, what conferences are you going to, blah, blah, blah. And like everybody in there is like, yep, Bid Summit, you know, is the, uh, you know, is, 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 is where we're headed. So, uh, so it's awesome that, uh, that we're, uh, you know, that, that we're starting to talk about it now because it's like six months away. Um, but anyway, 
So um, in your particular case, just a really easy way to do it would be just making a Google form. So this would be free for you. Um, and then all you would need to do is just have them, I mean, technically you could do it through the Google form um, or you could just have them like DM you on Twitter or something like that. So you can actually have a conversation with them if you want to. But if you're like, hey, I, I, I want this form and, I, and I'm gonna be collecting a bunch of information, then like a, a free way to do that is to create a Google form. So with the Google form, you can see like on mine, right? Because I use the Google form to, you know, for you to input this question. So you can see like all the different, you know, options that you have there. You can even add videos to it and stuff like that if you want. So um, using that will give you, you know, everything that you need in order to be able to collect whatever information that you need from, you know, the people that are interacting in your, uh, in your stream. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up. You know, you, you've got my Facebook, you've got my Twitter, I'm your channel member, so you're in the group. So if you have any questions um, about that or setting any of it up or whatever, just hit me up. I'll help you out. Um, next up, we've got Dem Crumbles Tech. Um, Dem Crumbles Tech says they've been on YouTube for a year or more. They do tech review content. The goal of the channel is to give more detailed product information to help people make buying decisions instead of just talking about marketing hype. And the question is, if I create a long form um, video and a shorts video about the same product, how long after publishing the long video should I post the shorts video? The same time, after a few hours, another day. So one thing that you can do is you can, um, one thing that you can do is you can go and you can, um, 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 you can publish a short technically at the same time that you publish a video um, or, you know, within like, you know, a few minutes or whatever. Um, and on the one test that I did, which, you know, like you can't ever make any decision off of one test, but I saw a video from Renee Ritchie saying that, you know, if you publish a short, it has no impact on your video that you publish because it goes out, you know, to the feed is the intention of that. So maybe some people will see it or whatever, but it's not gonna get that, you know, like a lot of impressions and the other features like a normal video typically would. Um, and, you know, like notifications and stuff like that. So because of that, um, you know, like just publish the video and then just wait just a little bit and then and then publish the, uh, the short form for it. Shark Scrapper says, um, Google form made that uh, note made in my in my tube spanner notes. Love it, love it, love it. What he's talking about um, is with uh, tube spanner, for those of you that use it, um, you may or may not know that as part of the browser extension, they have a notepad attached to it. So you can take notes on this live stream or any other videos that you watch on YouTube. You can even take notes on your own video and export those notes as chapters if you would like. Um, so you can, this is just a reminder to open that up since he mentioned that. Um, and if you're not familiar with Tube Spanner, like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream today, um, it's a tool for content creators that has all of the stuff that the other tools don't have. Like all the stuff that we want as creators that they don't have, like sharing your content out, you know, like on autopilot, um, the script writing tools, you know, things like that. So you can check that out at um, tubespanner.com. I got a link to that in the description too. So um, next up on our list here, we've got run number 10 already for our questions. So we're cruising through these, cruising, cruising, cruising. So um, the new alignment with Ashley is our next question here. Um, they do educational content, exploring ideas. And the goal of the channel is to explore ways to transform economics and governance in a di digital age. And the question is, is it okay to upload the same video on two different channels? Nope. Yeah, you don't, you don't wanna do that. It's not about you getting a copyright violation. Um, it's about, it, it's not reuse. I said reuse on the last question I was talking about this. Um, it's actually duplicate content is what it is. So, um, so you will risk not just a copyright violation, but community guidelines violations on both channels if you do that. So you definitely do not wanna, you definitely don't wanna do that. Um, let's see here. Next up on our list, we got Snappiness. Um, Snappiness has a photography channel. The goal of the channel is to share the joy of using old cameras. Nice. Um, the question is, recently you mentioned about putting videos that are currently performing well in playlists and emphasize high audience retention wins, I think you said. By topic still, of course. Um, could you elaborate on this strategy? Is it a bad idea to also include further down in the playlist older videos that didn't perform as well, but I think are still valuable? I know it's not a huge deal, um, but I would like to use playlist effectively. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. So um, when it comes to... Let's see. When it comes to playlists on YouTube, one of the ways that you want to think about putting your playlist together, especially if you're going to be linking to it from like, let's say like your in screen or from like your pinned comments underneath your video, the way that you want to be thinking about it is you want to put high performing content in there, content that's proven to keep people watching for, you know, a fair competitive amount of time compared to the other videos that you have. Um, videos that people just typically respond to better. So you have like the watch time element, but also the ones that generate more engagement and all of that, because you just want to make sure that your priority 
prioritizing good content. So the idea with that is you just put the content in there based on, you know, of course, what makes sense in terms of the order, but you also want to make sure that you're keeping in mind, like, hey, this video typically performs great when people click on it. This video also performs great, but which one of these topically makes sense to go first or second and third and fourth and so on, right? So you gotta make sure you're being mindful of that. Um, but when it comes to putting bad videos or videos that haven't performed well, um, you know, further down. So sometimes a video doesn't perform well because the click, you know, people just don't click on it. But the video itself, once they start watching it, it might end up being okay in terms of your audience retention. You can see that. Once they watch it, they might also like engage more in terms of liking it, leaving comments and, you know, subscribing to the channel and stuff like that. So what you would want to do is for any of the videos that you're putting in there, just go look at the audience retention and see if it's, you know, if people are enjoying that content once they click on it compared to the other videos that you have. And and if you find that, yes, they are enjoying it in terms of, you know, the audience retention, then of course, feel free to put it in there. But another thing to make sure that you are thinking about is when you are putting your, um, when you're putting your playlist together, also think about the the viewer that is interacting with your playlist. So there's things that you can do with your playlist to where it's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna put together a playlist where I'm putting like all of my videos in there, and I'm gonna use that playlist for the purpose of putting it at the top of my channel page, so I can add content to it or take content away instead of just having like my default uploads playlist there, right? So you have options like that, but then you also have it to where you're putting together playlists to where it's just like small sets of content, um, like let's say if you have, you know, five minute videos or 10 minute videos, then in that particular case, if you have three videos in that playlist, then you're looking at 15 to 30 minutes worth of time that somebody's going to need to spend in that playlist in order to get through it, right? So because of that, you don't want to just say like, hey, I'm going to just flood this playlist with tons of videos and expect people to watch them. Instead, just be like, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put like three or four of my best videos in here. Like if you're going to use this for the purpose of like, hey, I'm trying to get people in here and just like, I get them really engaged in my channel. So YouTube will recommend my content to them more. Um, and just so they can enjoy my content, then in that particular case, don't think like I got to put like every video that I have about this in the playlist. Think about it like what are the best three videos that I have about this? Or what are the best three video, three or four videos that I have about this that would also complement the videos or be a complement to the videos that people are currently watching that I'm going to be linking to this playlist from, right? And then once you start, you know, kind of mapping that out, then that, that will be an easy flow for the viewer. And you're also increasing the likelihood of that viewer, um, you know, completing that playlist, which is also a good thing. So because of that, when you're putting it together, just try to one, understand what it is that you're making that playlist for and how you're going to use it. And then of course, just think of the viewer when you're putting it together and think what would make the most sense with the time that they have. And, you know, topically as you're putting it together, like what would they watch next? And then of course you wanna prioritize the content that is typically proven to keep people engaged in the channel through, you know, continuing to watch the content. Other things you can do with that as well is, um, you know, like when it comes to people completing your videos, you also have where, you know, you have people clicking on your end screens also. So that can also happen while they're watching your playlist. So like, let's say that you have this playlist that you designed, right? That you are, drink, are bringing people through. You can also use that to where if you have a video where, you know, you are driving traffic to it, like let's say it's the first video in the playlist or the second video in the playlist, but people typically complete that video and you have a decent percentage of people clicking on your end screens and going to watch more content that you have linked through there. In that case, you can put some of that content in there too, because that's also a win if they do that, right? Because it still keeps them within your, you know, within your sphere of content. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that made sense. Um, let's see here. So I had a couple of uh, super chats come in here that I um, that I'm going to address here really quick, and then we'll hop back into the uh, form. But we're cruising through these form questions today. Um, so let's see here. So we have. Let's see. Okay, so Logan Altenberger super says, question on short form content. My videos perform well for me on reels. I'm usually 4,500-ish views, but get no views on shorts, many under 30 views advice. So this is why, like, um, I always recommend to content creators, I mean, these days I do, um, I recommend that if you are making vertical content, put it everywhere. And, and it's for this reason, because, you know, sometimes you'll put out content on TikTok and it'll tank, but it'll do awesome on YouTube and Instagram. Sometimes you'll put out content on, you know, like Instagram and it'll tank, you know, everywhere else. Sometimes you'll put out content and it'll do awesome everywhere. Um, but like when it comes to YouTube, just make sure that you are titling it, make sure that you are adding a description to it um, as well, because all of those things help the system get context to what it's about. Like it's already interpreting what it's like seeing and reading from what your voice is saying while it's making the captions. Like it's already doing all of that anyway. But when you add like a good title to it that has some context to what the video is about, maybe you have like a keyword in there 
you know, about what the video is about, um, and then you have an actual description in there, then that just helps the system better understand, you know, a little bit better what the video is about so that it might show it to more of the right people. Because what can happen is like, if your videos get shown to the wrong people because they're not optimized properly, then in that case, you can't expect those people to respond. That's why it's so important to always think of when you're publishing content, if it's shorts, if it's a live stream, if it's a piece of video content, for the people that I'm trying to reach, how are they gonna identify this? How are they gonna see this and know that this is something that they're interested in in some capacity? And the ways that you do that, you know, through regular content or, or you know, longs is through, you know, the thumbnail and the title. But when it comes to a short, you wanna use the title um, for that. And then of course, use the description for that as well. Daniel Batal in the house, what's going on, man? Hope you, you are doing fantastic. Nice to uh, see you on the stream today. Doug Hoos from YT, nice to see you. Chantel, hope that you're doing awesome. Brad, my magic flying potato, that goth farmer. Nice to see you here. Hope you're doing awesome. Melinda Elliott, nice to see you in the stream today as well. How we got here, genealogy, Ronnie's rambles. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. We had a, or the other day, we had a really good, uh, we had a really good live stream uh, the other day. Um, the KMH family, nice to see you in here as well. Hope everybody's doing awesome. Um, the next question that we have here um, is from soft, soft Spot for Art says, can you give advice on growing an animation channel? Is it a good idea to see it as a medium rather than its own niche or genre? Is it a good sign um, my few videos are having some noticeable growth already? Absolutely, it's a good sign. Um, but when it comes to animation, like one thing that, um, that or the, the challenge that animation channels have is people being interested in, you know, the actual topic enough or the thing enough in order to click on it. So because of that, one thing that, that has been effective for animation channels in the past is trying to mix in something that's already popular in some way. So like if you're doing like a 100%, you know, original comic of some kind that you're putting together, in that case, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, more challenging there and you're going to need to lean on the imagery that you're using in your thumbnail to pull people in and then also make the title and of course the content of the animation as well things that that everybody just kind of experiences at scale if you're trying to get them in front of like a more general audience make them you know about emotional things and you know that kind of stuff so like for example you know like uh what could I use as an example for this? So if you are doing an animation and that what, what kind of things do we all do? We all eat um, we all, you know, we all, um, you know, we all want, you know, shelter, we all walk across streets, um, you know, those types of things. So like, for example, maybe your, your thing would be about, um, you know, this always happens, you know, when I eat or just something like that. And then the whole story is about some, you know, crazy fiasco that happens when your character eats or something like that. So, you know, the idea is to either tap into like broad type emotional things like that, or just things that, you know, that are just common amongst humans, um, or to leverage, uh, things that are already popular in culture. So, you know, like for example, um, there's a channel and I can't remember off the top of my head, the name of the channel, but I found them on Reddit not too long ago. Well, actually this actually it was long ago and um, this is probably two years ago now um but what they did is during the time that they were putting out like all the marvel movies um they would just do like one animation for each marvel movie that came out during that time and they ended up making like six videos that were animation videos and they got over 200 and something thousand subscribers on their channel just from those six videos so they're really good videos but they were animations and they were creative animations as well but they were about something that was already popular so what that gave them the ability to do was to take that content and they started sharing it on reddit and when they're sharing it on reddit that allowed them to actually tap into a lot of the people that are already interested in that thing that's already popular which in that case was the marvel universe and then the people that were fans of that would go and check it out just so they could you know just enjoy more marvel stuff <laughs> and then, you know they would go and they would watch the content they would love the animations because they they were great and the channel you know blew up um, with just a with just uh, you know a few videos on it so because of that without question you can absolutely uh you know use that type of thing for animation channels but you know when you are doing something 100 unique um then in that case you're going to really need to leverage the thumbnail for it um and of course you know if you can just tap into things that you know a lot of humans do um then that will give you and express that through the thumbnail and the title um then you know then that will help as well but one thing in your case specifically that i would leverage right now is if your animations are good and you're good at you know grabbing quick attention and telling like really quick short stories, I would be doing shorts. Like I would be doing shorts like crazy with uh, with your animations because then people don't have to click on it. 
right? So then what you're able to do is you're able to put your animations in front of people and just like start that story as soon as they swipe up. And then that story that that, you know, story starts, and then they can get engaged right there. And then you know, they can, you know, subscribe to the channel or whatever, if they like that animation. And then you're increasing the likelihood of YouTube recommending your content to them later. And since it's already animation, especially if it's something recognizable to them in terms of the way that you do your characters or whatever, then in that case, you're increasing the likelihood of YouTube putting your content in front of people that are interested in animation, um, or at least people that have interested, uh, interacted in your content, and you just got to get them to click on it from there. So hopefully that helps. Um, let's see here. So um, Tube Spanner says my first, okay, we got the joke. We got the joke. Okay, it says uh, my first YouTube channel was about growing vegetables, but they all died. Then I tried to pivot to a music channel. I ended up with some sick beats with B-E-E-T-S. Love it. Love it. And see, now I, now I feel fulfilled, right? Like I'm like, okay, we can go on with the stream now because the, uh, you know, the, the joke was fulfilled. There wasn't this big like cavern, cavernous void of like, where's the joke? Where's the joke at? Right? Got the super chat, but no joke. Where's the joke? We need the joke. <laughs> All right. Next up on our list, uh, we've got uh, Rhonda's Lovely Sparks. Uh, Rhonda's Lovely Sparks says they do world culture ASMR stress relief and calm. And the goal of the channel is to reach 1,000 subscribers or more, go live and reach around the world. Um, the question is, I don't see the end screens on my new short, um, Promo Van Life, and to look at my channel and to give criticisms if you have time. So I, I'm not looking at channels during this stream, um, but you do not want to use end screens on your shorts. Um, end screens are, are, even though you can you can add them, end screens are actually made for uh, for longs, right? For, for regular videos and live streams and all that. Um, YouTube recommends do not use in screens on your shorts because what you want is you want people you know continuing the short experience um so youtube recommends that you do not use in screens on your shorts um really quick Super soft spot for art says riding off of that would it be best to choose topics to animate um related to each other similar to how a non-animation channel might do it yeah i would and, and the, the reason that you want to do that is because you want people to keep coming back based on you know the things that they're interested in right so the the core thing that they're going to come back for is your animation but you want to make your animations about things that they'll find like humorous and that sort of thing and different types of people find different things funny or entertaining or whatever so when you do kind of strike that chord and you have that video that does well and you're like hey um you know this is about this so what other things might people that are you know that that find this funny based on the types of things that i was you know joking about or whatever in the animation or the story that i was telling what uh you know what other things might that might those people be interested in and a really great hack for this in terms of understanding that kind of thing because you might be like well how would i figure that out so one great resource for that is create a reddit account go and go into the subreddits based around the things that your audience or your possible audience, you know, or the audience that you're trying to reach um, for everybody else, um, for that audience that you're trying to reach, go to Reddit, join all the subreddits about that topic, pay really close attention to all the different things that they talk about in there, the things they enjoy, the things they don't enjoy, the things they hate, the things that they love, the things they buy, you know, the things that they talk about buying, you know, there. Also, and this sounds creepy, but it's a great way to recon the audience that you're, you know, trying to reach is go into the, the subreddits. And when you find people in there that are leaving like, you know, good comments and people are, you know, like enjoying what it is that they're saying, go and actually click on their name, their username, and then you can go and see their post history. You can see their comment history. And then that will start showing you like other subreddits that they're involved in and things like that. And you can start to paint a picture of like, hey, people that are into, you know, these types of things are also into like these types of things. So then maybe I can leverage those as well when I'm putting, you know, my content together. So, you know, there's a lot of research involved and there's time involved and there's a lot of, you know, taking notes on stuff involved and all that. Uh, but that's a really great way to kind of get deeper insights on, on the people that you're trying to reach or the people that you're trying to reach or, or the people that you're trying to reach or the people that you're already reaching um, for the sake of, you know, just creating that better connection. Science-based fitness. Thanks for super chat. It's crazy, but I've been following your advice. Um, it's been working. Um, finally hit that 1,000 follower milestone. Appreciate all the advice. High five and fist bump to you for hitting your first 1,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. Nice work. Congratulations to you for that. Absolutely love when those milestones come in. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So uh, next question that we have here on our list, this is gonna come from the uh, form here. 
is uh, the engineer's perspective. The engineer's perspective uploads when they have time. They do mostly um, educational content. The goal of the channel, um, it's a hobby and hopefully a side hustle one day. The question is, my channel finally reached the monetization threshold and I applied to the YouTube partner program but was rejected. Da, da, da. Anybody, anybody else here applied to the partner program but you got rejected? Just, uh, just curious. Hey, really quick while I'm waiting for that feedback, Cool Soul says, can you give me your opinion on AI generated videos on YouTube? If people find value in them and you can put them together in a way to where viewers can find value in them and enjoy that content and get some type of value from that content, then I'm all for it. If it's like, hey, I'm making these um, AI videos just to spam YouTube so that hopefully, you know, people will like subscribe and stuff, um, then in that particular case, um, I'm not a fan of that at all. But if it's like, hey, like I'm, I'm leveraging AI to create value for other people, then in that case, all day long, yeah, totally, totally support it and think it's awesome. Um, but the question here, okay, so it looks like uh, we do not have that problem. It's good. Okay, so um, the question that we have here is my channel finally reached the monetization threshold and I applied for the partner program but was rejected. I have a couple of songs on my channel um, that has resulted in copyright issues and I want to know what to do about those videos without losing the watch hours from those videos. Would you recommend setting them to private? If you set them to private, you'll lose the public watch hours. Um, unlisting them, you'll lose the public watch hours or deleting them before reapplying for monetization. So if you think that those are the problem, even if you unlist them, then they're still going to be in there. Um, so because of that, um, if, if it was like, hey, I'm trying to get monetized on my channel typically everything is fine i'm doing everything above board but i did have these issues um then in that case i would take those out i would take those off the channel and then i would just you know keep moving forward with content that you are not going to have those issues with um let's see here wages super world thank track. you for the super chat says um thank you for all the great advice i tell everyone get over here god bless high five and fist bump thank you for uh, recommending people to come here super appreciate it high five and fist bump to you as well um, let's see here. So next up on our list, we're on number 14 already um, on our questions. And if you're just joining us, by the way, what we're doing is we are talking about all things related to YouTube. Um, we're talking about, you know, getting, uh, you, you've heard, you know, like if you've been here for more than like a minute, you know, you kind of hear the conversation, but we're talking about, you know, um, what we typically talk about here is, you know, getting more subscribers, getting more views, getting revenue. Um, and then we get it all kinds of new, get into all kinds of nuanced questions as well about, you know, all the different things that we deal with as content creators. Um, so that's what our conversation is um, about today. Um, so this next question, and if you have a question, by the way, um, if you've just joined us, there's a form, it's all free. Um, there's a form down in the description of the stream right now where you can put your question down there. And I'm just answering them in the order um, that they're received. So Real Watch This is the name of this um, next channel and the type of channel that they have is that's the problem. I'm guessing maybe they don't know. Um, the goal of the channel is monetization and the question is direction or niche of my channel. So here's, here's, the, um, here's the thing, when it comes to the niche of your channel, um, how many people here are making videos but you don't really know yet what type of niche you want to do, or you're just kind of like, hey, I'm just kind of uploading everything. And I don't really know, like, you know, like I don't even know, like, you know, what direction I'm headed. If that's you, um, just let me know. Um, because it, this question right here, I know it resonates, you know, with a lot of content creators, because especially when you're starting, because a lot of people, when you first start making videos, you don't really know, like, you know, what is my audience? You know, who am I serving with this content? Like all you're thinking about is like, okay, another video, right? Get another video up, make it about this, you know, and, and, and keep moving forward. So when it comes to, okay, so, we, so we've got uh, a couple. So when it comes to, um, you know, the niche of your YouTube channel, if you're somebody that doesn't know like where to start, um, hold on really quick. There we go. Um, so if you are somebody that doesn't know where to start with the niche of your YouTube channel, um, the very first thing to do, of course, is to start looking at the things that you're already interested in. Like, what do you think about during the day? What do you spend your time doing? Um, do you have any specific hobbies that you really love and that you just can't wait to get to? Like, those are the types of things that you want to make content about. Like, if you are publishing videos on your YouTube channel, it's about stuff that you don't really care about, then you can do that for a period of time, but eventually it's gonna start becoming extremely dull and you're not gonna wanna do it. And it's gonna become a task instead of it being something that you enjoy doing. So because of that, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you are thinking about, okay, if I'm gonna be doing this, then I'm going to first, I'm gonna commit to it for a period of time. That might be a year, you know, just to kind of get everything, you know, going. It could be two years, three years, you know, however much time you wanna give yourself. But what you want to do is you want to commit to, you know, a certain amount of time. And then you want to think about, okay, 
out of all the things that I, you know, enjoy doing, what are the things that I enjoy doing the most? What types of things do my friends always ask me about? Like if somebody, if somebody in my social circle, um, you know, says something, then, you know, it, what about me? Do all my friends say like, oh, you should talk to them about that, right? Like those types of things are what you want to think about. Because when it comes to YouTube, it's advantageous. It's not a requirement, but it's advantageous to make content about things that you are passionate about or things that you like legitimately care about. And the reason for that is because when you make a YouTube channel, you are going to eventually get known around that YouTube channel. So, you know, all the people that are interacting with your content, when you meet them eventually, you know, some of them, when you're like hanging out at Best Buy or, you know, you're hanging out at a restaurant and people walk up to you and they're like, hey, aren't you such and such from whatever channel? You'll be like, yeah, right? So you're gonna get known um, around the type of content that you create. So you wanna make sure that because you're gonna get known for it, you're gonna be constantly immersing yourself in it because you're gonna always be trying to come up with like new stuff that you can do. Um, and you're just gonna constantly be doing it. You just wanna make sure that you're publishing content about things that you that you really enjoy. Um, and when you do that, it's also reflected in your content because people, when they're interacting with you, you know, through either the videos or the shorts or the live streams that you're doing, um, even your stories, like whatever, they can tell. They can tell if you're into it. They can tell if you're not into it. They can tell, you know, like, hey, are they just kind of, you know, are they just kind of like halfway doing this or are they like really into this, right? They can tell. And for the people that are like really into stuff, like legitimately into it, what ends up happening is you are so into it that you no longer have to seek motivation to make videos for it because you just love doing it, right? You no longer have to seek motivation to like, you know, watch other videos in your space to see what's going on or to see other content creators in your space. Like, like you don't have to motivate yourself to do the thing because you're already enough into it. And if you can take that approach when it comes to your niche and finding those things, then in that particular case, it's going to create a really great situation for you long term because again, it's gonna be something that you're known for. Um, but when it comes to, uh, you know, trying to uncover that thing that you want to do, um, you also want to do some research. So, you know, if you have a very specific goal that you're trying to accomplish, like, for example, right here, you said monetization. So if you're trying to use YouTube for money, and then you're going to need some type of crossover with your passion and something that's monetizable. So of course, anything can be monetized, not anything, but most things can be monetized through YouTube ads. But you also have to think about, okay, if I'm going to be publishing this content, I'm going to be doing it for the sake of generating income of some kind, if it's full time or, you know, side hustle, whatever, then in that particular case, I also need to make sure that I'm doing something that is as easy to monetize as, you know, as, as possible so that I can maximize what I could get out of this as well. So definitely do some research. And the way that you do that is you go and look at all the other channels that make content like around what it is that you decide to make. And you go and look at all their video descriptions over time. And you'll see all the different things that they promote, all the different sponsors they work with, things like that for all the different channels that make content that's similar. And that will st start to paint a picture for you about how monetizable what it is that you are getting into is going to be. So you just have to kind of build that bridge between like, hey, if you're trying to, you know, if you have a very specific goal like monetization, then you have to build that bridge between like, okay, this is stuff that I love to talk about. I love to do. I'm always thinking about it. Everybody knows me for this already in my, in my personal life. You got to mix that with, okay, how can I utilize this, but also do it in a way um, that is, you know, that's easily monetizable or just monetize, doesn't have to be easy, but just do it in a way that's monetizable so that, um, that I can definitely, you know, get a return out of, you know, the efforts that I'm putting into all of this. Um, but really just lean on the things that you like really enjoy. And it's also really easy to default into certain categories. Like, oh, hey, I like watching this other creator who makes content like this, so I'm going to make content like this. That's a really easy trap to fall into. But what you wanna do is you don't wanna look at what everybody else is doing um, when it comes to deciding what you are gonna make content about, because that can lead you into that, like pigeonholed or where you end up like, wait, this isn't where I wanted to be, <laughs> right? Like I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be that person talking about, you know, these things all the time. Um, so because of that, you want to just make sure that you are, um, you know, just being, you know, uh, like that you're, that you're, you know, just going in and, 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 and sharing content about things that you like really enjoy. Um, because if you do that, then it's going to, um, it's going to make, it's going to ensure that you're going to be able to do it long term. And it, when it comes to doing this, even as a side hustle, when it comes to doing this, you know, where money is involved, um, you, you need to make sure that you're preparing for that long haul, right? Um, you know, that long haul might be five years, um, it might be seven years, it might be 10 years, uh, but you got to make sure that you're like, you know, prepared to, you know, do that. So because of that, you need to pick stuff that you are, you know, like really interested in.
Um, next up on our list here, um, we have, you know, I had some other super chats come in really quick. Um, I'm going to answer those and then we will continue on. Um, let me refresh this because those are not coming up. One second here. If you're enjoying the show, remember to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend right now. Okay, so uh, let's see here. The next one that we have, we had Wages World. Okay, so Dark and uh, Dishonest. <laughs> so uh, Dark and Dishonest says, my channel covers true crime. Um, are hashtags important for shorts? Are viewer profiles important for growth? Um, if so, how do I know who to target? So the people that you're targeting are people that are into true crime. So the very first thing that I would do is I would go create a Reddit account and I would go follow some true crime subreddits and I would start paying really close attention to all the different things people are talking about. I would start looking at um, the 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 actual user history of the people there you just do that by clicking on their on their name um but start looking at all the different you know other subreddits that people are commenting on things like that um and all the different you know other subreddits that they're posting in and of course the main subreddits of you know the true crime you want to make sure that you're paying attention to those as well so that you can say okay um if if I'm going to be trying to reach this true crime crowd, how do I resonate with them the most? How do I talk about the things that they care about the most? What other shows are they talking about? Like what other YouTube channels do they talk about a lot? What other podcasts do they talk about a lot? Because you can use that as like, okay, if everybody's talking about this, why are they talking about this? Right. And you'll you'll hear some people like I'm not even into true crime. And I've seen people talk about true crime podcasts and they'll talk about like how good the audio is in certain ones and how they do like full blown sound design for some of them and things like that. So when you run across that type of information and you're actually seeking it, then one of the things that can happen is it starts to really uncover like these are the things that are important to you know these types of viewers. So then you can make sure that on your end you have those things kind of buttoned up, so to speak. Um, but when it comes to hashtags for shorts. You don't need to put it in the title, but you know, you can absolutely use hashtags in any of your content. It can be a way for, you know, people to, you know, find the content that you're publishing. Um, and it also, you know, will give just like a, you know, a little bit of context um, as well. In terms of viewer profiles, if you mean your channel page, like your YouTube channel page, you definitely want to set that up because like when, when you're first getting started on YouTube, you might look at your YouTube channel page and be like, like, who's actually going to, you know, click on, you know, like there's, there's not going to be a lot of people clicking on my channel page, but over time, a lot of people do click on channel pages. So because of that, um, you want to make sure that you are optimizing your channel page based on you know the videos that are bringing in traffic to your channel. Um, so how you do that is you create playlist sections and then you add them to your, or you create playlists and then you add them to your channel page as sections. So you do wanna get your channel banner in there, get your profile picture in there, which you already have. Um, you want to make sure you fill out your about me page. You wanna do all the stuff, right? You Like YouTube has features that are just base bare bones setup features, you wanna go through the process of setting all of that stuff up um, without question, because one, that gets you prepared for any way that people are looking you know, into more of your content, more information about you, um, but then that also um, helps helps the viewers in terms of they hit your about me page that gives them more context and why it is that you're talking about true crime and the things that you're talking about. Um, they hit your channel page, the, um, you know, your main channel page, and they see the playlist, and then they can find the content that they care about the most from your channel instead of having to dig through your entire video archive in order to find it. Um, you know, those types of things just help optimize everything for viewers so they can find things easier. So again, when you're first getting started, if you're getting, you know, like 100 views a video, then in that case, you can't expect a lot of people be, to be hitting your page. But if you're getting thousands and thousands of views per every video that you publish over the course of a year, you're going to have a substantial amount of people hit your channel page. So you want to make sure that you can absorb that and so that you don't miss the opportunity. So you would just want to set everything up there so that you don't end up, you know, at a loss. Well, you wouldn't end up at a loss. You just wouldn't even notice it, but you would end up at a loss because you would miss the opportunity for people to hit your channel page and then find more content, watch more videos, which therefore increases the likelihood of them subscribing to your channel. You get more watch time, more ad revenue, like all the stuff. Like you'll get more of it if you just set up, you know, the basic features um, of YouTube. Um, let's see here, Silver Seeker, what's going on? Hope you're doing fantastic today. Um, let's see here. So next up on the list here, we've got uh, the that Goth Bomber. So should I bite the bullet and do a quick live stream of evaluating rabbits on my phone, or start with a long form to see if my audience would watch? Um, it's your call. Like, um, you know, you could do a quick live stream, you know, evaluating your rabbits or, you know, just, you know, just go this way, um, of course, landscape and then do the live stream and take them in there and show them your rabbits up close and talk about your rabbits and, you know, share their names and all that stuff so that anybody that does happen to see that on the replay or while it's live so they can, 
you know, get introduced to your rabbits. If they're the star of, you know, your channel, um, then they get introduced to your rabbits and they can, uh, you know, know their names and, you know, all that good stuff. And then from there, if you're like, hey, people did respond to this, okay. Um, then in that case, that's where it's like, hey, let me let me try one of these long forms where maybe I can, you know, answer some questions about my rabbits instead of, you know, just kind of it being a one-way conversation. Now I'm gonna start answering some questions about my rabbits and getting more of that, you know, community engagement around that. But when you try to do the short live stream, to where it's just you introducing your rabbits, you might find yourself in that same thing to where it's like, wow, this stream ended up being like two hours long. And I just thought it was going to be like, you know, 10 minutes <laughs> just because, you know, people are like, oh, they're so cute. What are their names and what type of rabbits and, you know, things like that. So if that starts to happen, just embrace it and uh, and enjoy it. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list, Silver Seeker says, you influenced my channel so much over the years. I said this before, i been obligated to watch. Thank you for your help over the years. My pleasure. I'm glad that you are enjoying the content, Silver Seeker. I'm glad that it's um, that it's been helpful. Roberto Blake, what's up, my dude? Hope you're doing fantastic. Says, welcome back, Nick. Any room to have me on later this morning? Absolutely. Um, the last at um, 11, uh, let's see here. So in like one hour, um, if you if you have time in one hour um, to, uh, to, to come on, absolutely. Uh, you are absolutely more than welcome at any time. Like technically you can come on now um, if you want, but, uh, uh, but one, uh, one hour from now is typically better. Um, just so it gives me time to get through like a decent amount of these uh, comments, but absolutely dude, for sure. Um, so next up here, I'm, I'm, I'll actually just drop the link in here. And then, um, with this link, um, just, you know, w in about an hour when you get that time, um, let's see here, Berto. in about an hour, um, when you get that time, just, just swing on in. I just, uh, I just dropped the uh, link in there for you. So, um, let's see here. So next I'll give you time for breakfast. Perfect. Perfect. Got to bring that, got to, got to fire up for all that electricity that you're bringing in. Right. <laughs> Uh, that Sith Lord reference is what that was, you know, shocking people out for, you know, those of you that, uh, that, uh, that don't know what's going on there. So, uh, let's see here. So next up on our list, we've got Tig Nasty. Tig Nasty says that they do Dragon Ball Z content. The goal of the channel is growing a channel, um, into a community of people, uh, that enjoy Dragon Ball Z. And the question is, what are ways to distinguish myself from other Let's Play Dragon Ball Z games? So first off is from the outside. So in terms of, you know, creating some type of style of some court, some kind for your thumbnails that helps you stand out, you know, immediately against the others. You still want to make sure you're leaning on Dragon Ball Z imagery because that's going to be the stuff that's going to help uh, the thing that's going to help people identify that your content is about something they care about. So you still want to use that. But if you can, um, you know, try to figure out something that you could do that would be a little bit unique to kind of help you stand out against the other people in the space there. Um, in addition to that, um, when you are putting your content together, like, you know, the very first thing you should do is go see what everybody else is doing. And then when you start seeing what other people in the space are doing, then start looking for holes in what it is that they are doing. And the way that you find those holes is one, you can find them, you know, intuitively yourself, or two, you can start combing their comment sections and looking for all the different things that people are saying about all these different channels and all the different things that they're doing around Dragon Ball Z and just look for little nuggets of information down there that you can leverage to use yourself to help you stand out with what it is that you're doing. Um, and just a, a really easy example of this um, when it comes to standing out. T's Hot Mess History, what's going on? Hope you're doing fantastic. Welcome to the stream today. Shark Scrapper, hope you're doing awesome, my man. So um, when, um, when, you are analyzing your space, right, in Dragon Ball Z, and you find that, you know, everybody in your space is doing like, you know, like 30 minute videos or, you know, 15 minute videos, try making five minute videos and just see how they do, right? Try making five minute videos for a period of time and just see like, okay, then maybe we'll, people will come to me when they don't have like tons of time, when they have five minutes to watch and not 30 or 15. Um, and if you find that everybody's doing five minute videos, then in that case, you know, be like, hey, let's see if people respond to a channel that's on 15 or 20 minute videos and then start publishing like that type of content. So like little tiny things like that um, can be the things that help you stand out. Um, in addition to that, if there's things that the other channels typically don't do, then in that case, try doing some of those things. If there's things that those channels all do, but you're like, eh, you know what, it's not really my thing. Like, for example, in tech, one of the things that people do in tech is, you know, they'll be like, hey, all these other channels, you know, they get into the nitty gritty and they're talking about like all of these little super, you know, nuanced details in the tech, but I don't really care about that. I just want to know how it works, 
right? So I just wanna keep it simple and just explain to people how it works, how to use the thing and then get on with the video. And then by doing that, that's one of the things that helps them stand out for the audience that just wants those types of things against the people that want all of those nitty gritty details for the tech that they're interacting with or that they're interested in. So, you know, just when it comes to, you know, standing out, it's those types of things. In addition to that, you know, since you are a gaming channel, you know, you can also, you know, do some of that with like your set design, with your production, because you're doing Let's Plays. So you can see like what it is that I do here. I've got like soundboards, I got like cameras, you know, switching around stuff like that. Um, you know, sometimes I graphics, the screen, I got like music videos I play. Like, I, you know, I do all kinds of stuff that kind of helps differenti differ differentiate me from all of the other people that make, you know, content like me. And um, when I first started, um, it, it was a much bigger separation because, you know, the way things were being done at that point in time was just a little bit more like stiff and rigid, so to speak. Um, and it, I'll be honest, it was just more professional, right? They're, you know, they were on screen as coaches. Um, me, when I first started doing it, I was like, like once I decided to start doing like YouTube related stuff, I was like, okay, I'm going to be like corny a little bit. I'm going to, you know, just kind of, you know, kind of let myself out and try not to be too serious. I'm going to make my set look cool. Um, I'm going to use like, you know, really, you know, high contrast, you know, like lighting and stuff. And I'm going to like, you know, leverage that as like one of the things that, you know, that I can do to stand out. I was adding like, you know, like little music video clips and stuff like that and adding like these little like, you know, corny things that I would do, you know, to my content and all that. And at that point in time, it, it just really helped me stand out because I was bringing something like fresh and unique. And another thing is, you know, some of the other channels that were making content like uh, me at the time, like they were, you know, sharing a lot of, you know, really great information. But one of the things that I was doing is because, you know, at that point in time, I was like, you know, going through it myself. So because of that, I was like, hey, this is how I'm ranking my videos in YouTube search as one of the things, right? And I'm like, you know, I do this and then I do this and I do this and then I do this. So, you know, I was showing like step by step, like these are the things that you got to do. And people really loved that. And, uh, and you know, that's th it's that kind of stuff that, uh, you know, kind of helped put me on the map. And in addition to that, which I'm going to be getting back to here, um, it's here, it's March now, I'm going to be getting back to that really soon. Um, but another thing that I'm going to be getting back to is um, I was also doing a lot of tool related content, um, which, you know, most people were just giving YouTube tips at the time, which is where things have kind of transitioned into now for my type of content. So because of that, um, in the very near future, I'm also going to start talking about a lot more tools, you know, apps, you know, like that kind of stuff, um, just more resources that, you know, you guys need as content creators. Um, so, you know, it's those types of things that help you stand out. So like, for example, if you go look at like channel makers, you go look at um, uh, Film Booth, you go look at um, like Roberto's channel, you go look at um, uh, Daryl's channel, you go look at uh, you know, any, you know, of the YouTube help channels now. Like, you know, hardly anybody, if anybody, is talking, also talking about like, hey, use these tools and this tool and this tool and this tool outside of like an occasional video. So that's, how, you know, that's one of the things that I did in the past to help me stand out. Um, and that's, that's a direction that I'm going to be going back into here in the very near future. Very long answer to a question. Um, but, you know, I know a lot of people here looking for ways to stand out, you know, against all the other people who make content like them. So I wanted to kind of, you know, kind of beat on that horse for a little bit, <laughs> so to speak. So uh, Kikoso Sports is the um, next one here that we have on our list. They've been on YouTube for less than a year. They have an NFL channel. The goal of the channel is building a brand and give the viewer the best experience. The question is, is it okay to lose subscribers on the way to a thousand subscribers? I've been getting so many views, but also have lost close to a hundred subs. Is this normal? Um, but I'm close to a thousand um, subscribers. So I'm going to blow your mind here really quick. So when it comes to um, losing subscribers on a YouTube channel, um, it's common in terms of, you know, like, uh, you know, you can't expect everybody that subscribes to your YouTube channel to stay subscribed for, you know, forever because, you know, interests change, you know, people change, their taste in, uh, their taste in content changes. Um, here, let me go in here really quick. Um, their taste in content changes. Um, like, you know, all of, you know, like people just, you know, we, we, we morph uh, through time. So because of that, you know, we're going to end up, you know, losing subscribers. In addition to that, you know, some people will close accounts, start new accounts, you know, things like that. But uh, right here, Let's see here, how can I show you this without, maybe if I zoom in, it'll, it'll lock out some of that other stuff. Yeah, it does. Okay, so check this out. I'm just gonna share a screen here with you really quick. So in YouTube Analytics, um, I'll just put it up here. There we go. Let me just scroll up so I can get the screen ready for you guys. So check this out. So this is gonna blow your mind. So for anybody here that is like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm losing subscribers and it's kind of, you know, it's kind of frustrating. Check this out. This is gonna, you're, 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 
what is what's she saying in the matrix this is gonna this is gonna cook your noodle or, or bake your noodle <laughs> So um, this is a, a screenshot from my uh, YouTube analytics right here. And if I go to um, basically an advanced analytics, I just set this to lifetime here. And, um, and you can see when you click on this little button right here, this little, uh, this little blue icon, it gives you the option to add subscribers lost. Um, so one of the things that you can see right here on my total subscribers lost, if you look at this. So since I've started my YouTube channel back in 2014, you can see I've lost over 360,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So in terms of like, you know, what I've generated on my YouTube channel, you know, like I'm, I've generated well over a million subscribers. It's just that I've lost, uh, you know, that I've lost um, enough that has ended up, you know, you know, ended up, you know, kind of keeping that play button, you know, for that million, you know, at bay, you know, a little bit. But when it comes to, you know, losing subscribers, um, it's a it's a normal part of the it's a normal part of the gig. Right. So um, just embrace it and be like, you know, hey, <laughs> so uh, Dynasty super Trades uh, in five. Thanks for the super chat says, um, thanks for what you do for us, Nick. Uh, we currently have 7000 subscribers in a strong community. How do we scale from 7000 to 20,000 engagement and content quality are there um, and we're busy on the socials. Um, I want to pour gas on it. So what you want to do is um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with your advanced analytics inside of YouTube. Um, but if you go into your advanced analytics, um, you know, like I'm, I'm going to guess that your channel is like most channels to where, you know, you have different content that you're putting out. I'm actually looking at it right now. Um, you have different content that you put that you're putting out, even though it's within the same niche. So like if I'm looking at yours here, I'm not sure exactly what these are. Hold on. OK, so it looks like you're doing some type of uh, gaming content maybe here. Um, let's see here. So you've got dynasty football, 2023, it looks like, and then, uh, let's see, we have level up your league and then they reviewed my dynasty roster and then you've got like players. Okay. So, so what you can do, like in your case is you can go through and you can, you can create like one group that is like, okay, this is all the content where it's like a player breakdown or whatever it is that you're doing in these player videos. So like your, your Kyler Murray video, that would be one. So basically all the videos that you have that are like that video, you would put them in one group. And then for the other group, yeah, so then maybe the next one would be like the Trey Lance and Macaroni Jones, uh, you know, person. And then the next group might be something like, uh, let's see here, like level up, right? You have one like level up your Dynasty League. And of course, I'm just looking at this really quickly. Um, so like with your level up content, if you have more videos on like, hey, this is how you level up or this is how, you know, you like, you know, fix these, you know, problems to advance yourself in the game or whatever, then in that particular case, you would put those into another group. And then as you start doing that and you start grouping together all these different ways that you, you know, put out your content, then what's going to happen is you're going to be able to, in your advanced analytics, to compare content sets against each other. So you can say like, here's my team breakdowns compared to like my um, leveling up series that I'm doing. So um, between these two, a lot of people respond way better to these team, uh, to these uh, name breakdowns or these player breakdowns than they do the other one. And I'm just using that as an example. I don't know how it is on your channel, but um, I'm just using that as an example. It's gonna help you identify things like that. And then once you identify things like that, then the process that you usually take here is you say, okay, well, if I have three different things that I'm making content about and this one is performing the worst, then in that case, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kill that either temporarily or forever. And instead, I'm going to experiment with something else that I can do to kind of fill that hole. Um, so then I'm going to, you know, focus on the two that are driving, you know, the most, you know, growth or whatever it is you're trying to do with your channel. Um, and then I'm going to try to come up with another pillar that I can start experimenting with on my channel in order to, you know, create that, you know, that third. Um, or just focus on those two. But then even when you're focusing on those two, one is going to perform better based on, you know, different metrics for what it is that you're trying to do. Like one might generate more subscribers, one might generate more ad revenue, one might generate more watch time, those types of things. So you have to prioritize your goals when you're looking at this stuff um, and what it is you're trying to do with the channel. But if you're trying to just ignite the growth and do that faster, then going in and using that grouping feature to um, to figure out with the different types of content that you make, what it is that people respond to the best um, that's that's the way that you want to do that. Um, in addition to that, you can use that same exact feature to test your thumbnails because you're doing a lot of different stuff with your thumbnails. So like, for example, you have some thumbnails where you've got like five different players on it. You have some thumbnails where you have one player. You have thumbnails where you have two players. You can even go in just for the sake of your own understanding. You can go into your grouping feature and you can say, OK, um, this group, because you can make as many groups as you want. This group is all the groups where I have one player in the thumbnail. This group is where I have two players in the thumbnail. This group is where I have three players in the thumbnail. And 
then you start comparing those, of course, you have to keep in mind because, you know, you are trying to collect, you know, data that you can work with here. So you do have to keep in mind like topics and, you know, you have to compare that, which is why you'd create the other groups on the content set. So you can compare it against like, well, of course, these are doing better because that content type typically does better. You know, you have to factor those types of things in as well. But using that feature, it can also help you understand like when I do these types of things with my thumbnails and titles, the people I'm trying to reach typically responds to them better, right? So you want to do those things. And then of course, the big, humongous, gigantic elephant in the room is the content that got you to 7,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. Um, it's got clues all over it in terms of like your audience retention reports, how people are responding to what it is that you're, that you're you know, doing in general. So you want to go through all of that content and you want to analyze all of your audience retention reports and start taking notes on all of it and start looking for places in your videos where people drop off. So you can start looking for commonalities between those places where people drop off across your content. So you can notice like, huh, interesting, never thought about when I, you know, when I do these things or when I set up this next section of the video in this way, it actually causes people to leave. Right. When you start noticing things like that, then you can start fine tuning those things or changing those things to then make an even better experience for the viewers, which then will ultimately end up, you know, getting your videos in front of more people, which will then ultimately help you grow faster as well. So you want to make sure you're doing those things. And while you're at it, um, also make sure that you're paying very close attention when you're looking at your audience retention reports to what you're doing at the end of your videos as well. Because when people get to the end of your videos, it's really common, especially for people that are like just getting started and haven't ran across the information yet. Um, it's really common for for people when they get to the end of their video to say things like, oh, and that's why I think this, or hey, you know, that, you know, that concludes our video, or that is, uh, you know, hey, in this game, you know, that's pretty much all we got for today's game, blah, blah, blah. Then they start on this big, long spiel. That is where people start leaving. Butler Family Farm, what's going on? Hope you're doing awesome. But that's where, Chuck, what's going on? But when people, uh, you know, start using that, that, finalizing language in their videos, it tells the people that are watching that video that the video is done or what they came in for is done, and then they'll, they'll leave. So you wanna make sure that you're looking for things like that in your audience retention reports, because what you ultimately wanna do, and this is for everyone here, what you ultimately wanna do when you're putting your content together is you wanna get people as far as you can in the video. And then before you use any type of things like, oh, hey, you know, if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe and blah, blah. Like before you do any of that stuff, think of another video on your channel, like while you're recording the video, think of another video on your channel that would be a great fit for the people that are watching that video based on the topic of that video or what the people would come into that video for. And then hand off is what we call that to another video or playlist that that, that viewer would be likely to engage with next, right? That's what you wanna do. So what you want to, what you want to make sure that you're doing there is right when you get to the end of the video when the content's done, instead of having all that stuff that you add to the end of your video, instead say something along the lines of you can do this in a lot of different creative ways but i'm just going to give you like a bare bones base place to start with this is if you enjoyed this video which is also finalizing language i've got another i've got an entire playlist of videos just like this you can click on right here um go ahead and click into that now or um, hey, uh, you know, there's also, you know, more depending on the type of content you make, um, you know, uh, you know, this just shares, you know, one thing about, you know, this particular team, or this just took us through this particular player. But I'm guessing you're also into a lot of the other players that are in this game as well. So make sure that you check out this playlist right here, where I do breakdowns of all of the characters in this game, you're going to love everything in there, you can go ahead and click into that now. Right. And then the idea is to get people to click into your end screen so that they'll watch more content. And the reason you want to do that is because, of course, at the core of it, 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 it's an easy thing for the viewer to find more of the content that they want to watch on your channel without abandoning your channel to go watch other videos. Um, but in addition to that, if people are interacting with your YouTube channel, and they're really enjoying what it is that you're doing and they're watching multiple videos on your YouTube channel. Every video that they watch, every time they engage with your content, like everything it is that they're doing when they're enjoying your content, if they're enjoying it, then you're increasing the likelihood of YouTube recommending them more of your new content as you publish it. And you're increasing the likelihood of YouTube recommending them content that they think those viewers would enjoy from your archive. So you wanna make sure that you are being very intentional and very mindful about what it is that you're doing at the end of your videos, because it can make a huge difference on the overall growth of your YouTube channel. So make sure you're keeping that in mind. Uh, Ronnie's Rambles. Super chat. Thanks for the super chat, man. Says, um, sorry, I have to go, but I just need to clarify. Um, Thai channel, uh, one Thai channel and one English uploading same video, but edit out most of the alternate languages. Is that an issue? 
So if you if you have the same content, but you are editing it in a different way, and it's all in a different language, then you're totally fine. So technically, you can upload videos of the same uh, uh, the same video, but with dubs on them that are in different languages. But the way that things are starting to go now, because right, we got to stay current with you know what's going on in the platform. Um, YouTube has the option now, and in your case, Ronnie, you can leverage this. So. YouTube has the option now to where if you choose to, you can upload your videos in English, but you can have the, 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 the titles and descriptions, you can translate them using Google Translate um, into Thai. And then you can also have somebody, some Thai person that you know do an audio dub of your video. So you give them the script and just have them basically re, just re, you know, voice your video, but in Thai. And then you can upload a Thai dub to your video, and if they come in, if a Thai person comes into your video and they come into that, you know, through the Thai metadata that you've translated, then YouTube is going to automatically show them the Thai dub. It's going to automatically switch that to their, you know, preferred language, and then they'll be able to enjoy your content um, without you even having to go through the extra work of, you know, putting it all in other channels and so on. So you would prioritize it based on the real audience that you're trying to reach, but then you would make it accessible for Thai people, right? That's the that's the that's the approach. Um, let's see here. So uh, we had some members messages come in here um, really quick. So um, 86th Street Chef Project says uh, the go live together link provided by the prompt keeps sending my guests to a troubleshooting page tried on iPhone and iPad same result thoughts. So I haven't used the go live together um, feature. I, I use StreamYard for that. So I haven't used that feature uh, personally. So I'm not sure how to troubleshoot that. I wish I could help, um, but I, I, I'm not sure um, on, on, on what to do there um, with that. Um, outside of, you know, sending a message to like hopping on Twitter at team YouTube and let them know the problem that you're having. Um, that would be the, um, that would be the, you know, that would be the approach to take there. Um, speak English with this guy says, thanks, Nick. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the, the Goth Farmer says, thank you for all your help at 180 subscribers and getting ready for a huge batch. Recording over two weeks, hope my ADHD can handle it. It can, don't hope, it can, right? Make it so, just be like, hey, you know what? I got this, right? I'm not gonna think about, you know, like, oh, this might limit me. I'm just going for it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get it done. Um, and also with that, keep in mind when you're batch recording, I wouldn't batch edit, like if you're, you know, if you're, if you're still at that, you know, like getting everything, you know, kind of rolling phase. And the reason that you don't want to um, batch edit is because when you publish a video, you're going to see how people respond to that video. And then on the next edit that you do, you can modify that edit so that you can create a better experience based off of the information that you learn from that, you know, first video, um, or not just the first video, but like every video that you publish, right. Um, so because of that, like batch record it, but you know, make sure that you are just being mindful about how people are responding in your audience retention reports and then uh, go from there. Um, sprinkled and painted. Thank you for the super chat. So I just want to thank you and your brother um, and music creators for uh, music. I've used a couple of videos. Nice. Glad that you're enjoying creator mix. So what she's talking about there is uh, we have a free music service for um, YouTube content creators. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to talk about this as well. Uh, we have a free music service for um, for content creators called creator mix. Um, this is created by my brother D and myself, um, where we have exclusive music for content creators. Um, you can use it in your videos. You can use it in the background of your live streams you can use it if you have like courses or podcasts whatever we're we're you know like it's fine we've made it for content creators um but you can find that at creatormix.com um you can also stream it if you just want to sample the music um you can find it on like spotify you can find it on apple music like all the major you know streaming platforms if you go to creatormix.com slash stream which is what Chantel just put in the chat here um then that will take you to you know where it is that uh that you need to go there in order to find the place to download it the places to stream it and all of that Thanks for uh, doing that, Chantal. I appreciate it. Um, so next up on our, and thanks for that sprinkled and painted. Super, um, super appreciate it. Glad that you are enjoying it. What's up, people? This your boy, Viper. Viper, man about tech in the house. What's up, my man? Hope that you are doing fantastic. Nice to see you in the stream today. Thanks for swinging by. Appreciate it, man. Always like to see you showing up here. So the next question that we have here on our list, uh, let me check my chat here. Got It's got all of those. Okay, good. Um, so next up we have... Kiso Sports, I hope I'm saying that correctly. They do NFL content. The goal of the channel is building a brand to give the viewer the best experience. Oh, we did this one already. Okay, next up, we got number 17. Um, we have English Woodswin. 
Woodsman, sorry. Um, English Woodsman does outdoor content. The goal of the channel is to enjoy the great outdoors. Um, the question is, my main videos are all different kinds of campings, tits, hammocks, um, divvy bags, hot tents, um, but I've been uploading videos about different army ration packs, whichever get three to 4,000 views, camping 20 to 50. Would you keep making the army ration pack videos? Any help would be great. So here's the thing, um, if it was me, um, the very first thing that I would do is I would think about what I'm trying to do with my YouTube channel. If the only thing that is important to you is your view counts, then in that case, um, leading into the view counts is definitely something, you know, like leaning into the content that drives the view counts is the thing. However, with your, um, the what did you call them? Your army ration pack videos, if that's something to where you're like promoting those as an affiliate so that you can, or you're talking about them as an affiliate so you can drive you know, revenue through affiliate marketing, then in that case, um, if that was the goal, then even though they're getting less views on them, but the purpose of that content is to share with your viewers you know, these different rations that they can count on, but you're also making money as an affiliate from it, then in that case, that would fill that need of you know, driving that affiliate revenue, even if it wasn't a high performer for your channel in terms of views. So when it comes to your YouTube channel, um, I mean, this is for everybody here. It's really important to make sure that you're super clear on what it is that you're trying to do with your YouTube channel, because when you're clear with what it is that you're trying to do, then you'll make the right decisions that will lead you in the path of accomplishing whatever it is you're trying to do. Because when it comes to YouTube, everybody's so focused on like, hey, I just got to get as many views as possible, or I got to get as many subscribers as possible. And that's okay. But you know, getting just lots of views or getting lots of subscribers in a lot of cases isn't you know going to be the most fulfilling thing long term there's got to be other stuff attached to it some mission that you're on or just something that you're trying to accomplish in some way but when you are you know publishing your videos um you know if you know what it is that you're doing, it makes situations like this like really easy to handle. Because then it's like, hey, if I'm just going after views, then in that case, it's crystal clear. Like I need to do more camping content and just completely remove the ration packs from what it is that I'm doing because people aren't responding. So out of testing, you know, the ration packs is one of the things that I'm doing. People aren't responding. So I'm, I'm taking that series out. Just like if Netflix has a series and, you know, people aren't responding to it, great. Then they might cancel that series after, you know, like one or two series, right? Um, so the same exact thing with you as a content creator on your YouTube channel is that, you know, if you put out content and people aren't enjoying that content, then by all means, if that content isn't fulfilling a very specific goal for you, then by all means, you know, uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to do it. Super uh, chat. Riggs, thanks for the super chat says, why haven't you uploaded a video in over a month? Um, cause I'm currently testing on what I can do with live streams. Um, so if you look at my channel right now, um, most of the content that I'm publishing right now is live stream content. Some of that is long form content, like the one that you're watching now. Some of them is short live streams, like I do for my news segments. Um, in addition to that, I'm mixing in YouTube shorts as well. So I'm just experimenting with those things right now and seeing what I can do without video content. Um, and then once I get done with that experiment, then I'll start uploading video content, you know, as normal again um depending i mean we'll see how it all works out but you know <laughs> like if it's like hey you know the live stream thing you know just keeps on thriving and then and then in that case i might just keep you know live streaming for a while like we'll see uh we'll see how it all works out but that's the thing with experimenting right like everybody like when you're you know putting out content and all of that there's the things that you know that that are standard and then there's the things like hey let me just try this and see you know see how it goes so uh you know that's the whole thing with experimenting so next up, um, we have number 18 here for the questions cruising through these today. Um, we have F FM Fan YT, um, I believe is, is how that's put together. Um, they do gaming content. Um, they do it as a hobby. And the question is, uh, it's kind of two parts. Is it good to have a Discord channel for our community if you have a YouTube channel? That's the first one. And the second one is about a question earlier about reaching out to certain people in certain countries. Um, how do we reach certain countries for our content? Um, you do that by having the language of the video and the metadata of that video in the language of the country that you're trying to reach. But keep in mind, um, uh, you know, when it comes to the people that YouTube is gonna show your content to, you're gonna get viewers from all over the world anyway. But when you are trying to, you know, make sure that you're being seen in a very specific country, you have to make sure that you are, you know, speaking that language in your videos or that somebody is, um, or that they're dubbed in that language, um, or, or, and, or that all of your metadata is also translated into that language or it's in that language, you know, from the, from, from jump. Um, let's see here. And the other part of this is the, about the discord. 
So when it comes to communities um, on YouTube, it's not something that's required, right? Like you don't have to have Facebook groups or discords or Slack groups or, you know, any of those things. Like you don't have to have those. It's just some things that, you know, some content creators do so that they can, you know, just get closer to their community. Um, it helps people get closer to their community. Um, it gives people a place to share, you know, their videos, you know, with the people that are most engaged in what it is that they're doing, um, those types of things. So like, for example, like, let's say you publish a video um, and you're like, okay, it's part of my publishing process. Um, I get everything, you know, published on YouTube. And then let's say that I share it out to like Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever it is that you're at. Um, and then let's say that I also drop it into my Discord for the people that, you know, are like there because of my content. Then in that case, you know, you're going to have a certain percentage of those people that will go over and enjoy the video. But what you want to make sure that you are doing is that over time, you want to make sure that you are using your analytics, looking in your traffic sources report, going into the external traffic for the channel as a whole. And in this particular case, and just looking at Discord and seeing like how long people typically, you know, stick around when they come in from Discord. And then that'll let you know if that's an effective like sharing technique or not. Um, but when it comes to having the community side, there's lots of advantages. So the very first, of course, is it's a place to share your content. Two, it's a place to where if you ever have any problems with your channel to where, let's say um, you accidentally violate guidelines that you didn't know about and your channel gets taken down. That's the place that Discord group's gonna be the place that's gonna help you get back and going on another channel um, or another channel somewhere else on, on, on the internet or whatever. Um, that group is also going to be something that down the road, when you start working with sponsors, if you're not already, um, when you start working with sponsors to where that, that discord community will also, if it's active, will also, um, you know, help uh, you with your brand deals as well. And when you are entering into the brand deals with, you know, whatever companies you're going to be working with, um, you have that like, oh, hey, in addition to my YouTube channel, I've also got a discord community full of X amount of, you know, people that are also interested in the, in this topic or, you know, these types of things. And by doing that, and, you know, that also kind of levels everything up, you know, quite a bit in terms of, you know, your value to, you know, the brands that you work with. So there are advantages, but disadvantages, it's work, like you got to monitor it. Um, and and when it comes to the work of like a, uh, like a community, we actually closed down, like well, it's still there, but like I took the name off of it and stuff just because it's a lot of work. Like once it starts getting going, even with moderators, like you, you, like you have to really be on top of it because people will go in there and they'll post all kinds of crazy stuff. People will go in there and spam it, things like that. So you have to really be on top of it and you have to be willing to be on top of it and it can take a decent amount of time. Um, and another part about that is like if you have that discord group and you're not paying attention to it it's important to remember that if it's all branded around you and your youtube channel and what it is that you're doing that that discord group is essentially an extension of you so because of that the things that happen in that discord group are on you right and everybody in that group is going to see it that way so when you are if you're enjoying the show remember to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend right now so when you are, uh, you know, uh, you know, when you decide to have a discord group or any type of online community like that around your YouTube channel, it's just important to know that there is, you know, more work um, involved with what it is that you're going. So it's going to take up more time. Rich Graham says, um, appreciate all the info. Um, please do an overview of YouTube analytics, CTR, AVD, um, things to pay attention to. Lots of info in there um, isn't current. So when it comes to your click through rate, the most important thing to think about is um, you never want to just look at the upside down triangle. Um, uh, some people call it like a performance funnel or a view funnel. Like you don't want to just look at that to interpret how people are responding to what it is that you're doing because that's like an average out view. What you want to do instead is you want to go into your advanced analytics for every single one of your videos and you want to look and see where that click through rate is coming from. So for example, you might find that like on your channel page, your click through rate is really high and it's offsetting what your real click through rate is. But what you want to do is you want to look at search if you are targeting youtube search for your content if you are you know if the type of content that you make is targeted for search then you want to see how people are responding from search if you are trying to get more browse traffic um, on youtube then in your traffic sources report you need to look at your click-through rate there um, when you are trying to get more suggested traffic you need to look at your click-through rate there and by doing that it's going to help you look for kind of fail points and what it is that you're doing so for example and this is an example I like to give for people that watch my videos just because it's easy um, to, 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 to get, is like if you look at, at my thumbnails that I do for my news segment, 
those typically perform really low in suggested videos. So for the ones that are evergreen, I might go in and change them later in terms of like, hey, this is gonna be something that people are gonna need to, to, to know for quite some time, this update or whatever is happening. So because of that, I might change some of those thumbnails. But if it's something to where it's like, here's the topic, it's gonna burn after you know probably a week or two, um, then in that case, you know, I won't do anything with it. But when it comes to, you know, when it comes to those thumbnails, um, my suggested is like way low on those um, in terms of my click through rate. And the reason for that, um, at least my interpretation of the reason is because um, it's low compared to everything else that I publish because when it comes to my new segment, there's so many like small little details in there. When you when you look at it at a small size, like it's it's not just clear. You see my face, but if you are not familiar with me already, then you know the the thumbnail doesn't really stand out in terms of like, hey, this might be something about YouTube, right? So um, so that's my interpretation of why they don't you know perform well and suggested. But when you're tracking that sort of thing or paying attention to it, it helps you identify those sorts of problems. Same thing applies. Like let's say that you're that you're click through rate is like great in search, but it sucks in, in browse. Then in that particular case, that helps you identify that, okay, when I'm targeting people and people are looking for my content in search, I'm doing okay there and they're responding well to it. So I'm like accomplishing the thing there, but people aren't responding in browse. So what's the problem? Well, typically in that case, you've only optimized for YouTube search without adding compellingness to the title and thumbnail. And therefore, it's not something to where people think like, oh, I got to see this when it shows up on their homepage, right? So when you are looking in your traffic sources report at your click through rate, it helps paint a bigger, more realistic picture of what might be going on. Now, of course, as always, you got to make sure you're keeping your impressions in mind because, you know, a lot of impressions, but a low click through rate that's, you know, typically fine. But if you have, you know, like just a little bit of impressions and then a very high click through, not very high, but just like an okay click through rate, then in that particular case, it's like, well, the reason you're not getting a lot of impressions is because either the video isn't doing great or just people aren't clicking on it when YouTube is showing it. Therefore, you're just not getting that, you know, that that priority, so to speak, uh, when it comes to YouTube. Um, when it comes to average view duration, um, the thing you have to make sure that you're thinking about there is that's just a, 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 a like a, 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 like it, it puts in your face the quality of your content because you know when people come into your videos like if you see people leaving like right away then that's like okay all that means is like it, it i'm not like i'm not bad right it just means that i have to work on this part of the video i gotta figure it out right it's like a puzzle i'm putting together i gotta figure out like how do i get people to respond when my videos first start better so let me start experimenting with how i open my videos am i gonna am i gonna like grab their attention with me on camera or am i gonna be talking while i'm showing some you know extra footage that they're looking at am i gonna have music no or yes um and just experiment with different versions until you figure out the thing that you know that your particular audience that you're trying to reach you know responds to when they first come into the videos and it works that way all the way across the video itself and when it comes to this there's a threshold right so there's like what it is that you're seeing versus what it is that you're willing to do. Like in some cases, you might see that there's like, you know, like, hey, I can get people to about here. And if I could just work on this part right here, if I could spend the next like three months figuring out how to get people past this part, then my entire channel would do way better. Um, if you're willing to do that, then when you see those holes because you're paying attention, it helps you, you know, know like, hey, I got to go into experiment mode and I got to figure this out. Because, um, you know, this whole, this whole thing when it comes to YouTube, like when you first come into it and you're trying to like figure everything out, it is like, you know, putting a puzzle together, but it's also that way even when you have experience because as you evolve and the platform evolves and as viewers evolve, everything is constantly changing. So because of that, you have to always be paying attention to what it is that you're doing so that you can look for, you know, just things that you can always improve on over time. And then, you know, you'll find like, hey, you know, like this particular thing at this point in time, don't really care right now because I'm actually focusing on, you know, doing this part of my channel. So because of that, I'll come back to that later and, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so when it comes to, uh, you know, your click-through rate and average view duration, um, those are things that, you know, that that you, you know, that that all of us as content creators have to think about. Demon Row, thanks chat. for Super Chat, man. Appreciate it. Says, I'm approaching 250,000, been doing this three years. Um, a lot to your advice, um, a lot due to your advice. Um, thank you, Nick. Um, should I broaden to grow more? First off, <clears throat> high five this month to you. 250,000 subscribers is no joke right? Like you're, you're rocking. Um, it says, um, should I broaden to grow more, stay super niche? And when are we getting, um, getting you on a Harley? Um, you got the beard going already. Let's go. <laughs> so quick side story. So, um, when I lived in the States, I had a Yamaha V-Star, um, and my best friend, uh, Brian, he had a, uh, he had a, uh, a road King classic and, I, I, I've probably told this before on stream, but basically on his Road King Classic, the day he got it, 
he's like, you know, hey, I'm going to be over here, you know, come check it out. So I went and I met up with him um, uh, and, you know, I, I parked and I got, I'm like, wow, this thing's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I sit on it and I put up the kickstand and I actually took it. Um, if I remember correctly, I think I might've even like driven around the block or something. And then um, I came back and when I put the kickstand down, Oh man, when I put the kickstand down, I was used to the, the, the V star and I, I, I put it down to where it was kind of, you know, just in front, just a little bit, not thinking that it needed to go all the way up. Right. So then when it tilts, you know, it, it catches it there. So what ended up happening was, um, I put it down just like, you know, just a little bit. And when I got off the bike, it, it just started tipping. And I was like, oh, no, oh, no, like it's tipping. And, you know, anybody that's familiar with with Harleys knows that like the Road King, um, the Road King classics are just super heavy. So I tried to get under it like as it's falling over and like I'm sitting there and I'm trying to push it up. And it was already past that like point to where, you know, like the what is it, the center of gravity? I guess it is. It just kind of went over too far. And I'm sitting there and I'm like struggling to like, you know, get this thing back up. And uh, and, and my friend Brian, he's just standing there like at the front of the bike, just going like this just watching me struggle, trying to keep his bike up, just shaking his head like this, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's getting ready to knock over my brand new bike. Um, but eventually he ended up coming over and like help and we got the bike back up and stuff. But uh, yeah, funny story there. I figured you would appreciate that. But um, in terms of um, should you broaden out um, or uh, uh, stay super niche? So one thing that I would definitely do in your case, because if I remember correctly, you're covering like a lot of bike shows and stuff like that. Um, I would experiment with um, other content that isn't, uh, you know, bike show related um, to where, you know, maybe you are, you know, just sharing other things about, you know, being a. Um, you know, somebody that rides motorcycles um, and just tapping into like, you know, hey, not only am I going to all these things, but like, here's my bike. And, you know, here's why I choose, you know, this particular bike. Here's why, you know, we, you know, do all these different mods to it. Like these are the specific mods we have. And, you know, letting people get to know like more about you, know, like you and your story and why it is that, you know, you do what it is that, you know, you do, why you chose the bikes that you have and talking about your bikes, maybe other bikes, you know, things like that and adding some of that content in there based around things that you love, um, you know, about, about motorcycles, because the people that are watching your videos, um, you know, if they're, you know, if they're into like these shows and they're going to these shows and maybe some of them are checking them out because they couldn't make it this year or something like that. In that particular case, it's like, you know, hey, these are motorcycle enthusiasts. So anything that you put on here that has to do with motorcycles, you know, is probably going to be a good move. Um, but I would definitely experiment with that type of thing just to, uh, you know, get that closer, you know, connection with the people that are interacting with your content. Jason T. Lewis. Hey, what's up, man? Super hope that you're doing fantastic. Um, painfully honest tech. Hope you're doing great, man. Thanks for the super chat. Nice to see you in here. Hope that you're doing great. Martin, calming anxiety. Hope that you're doing fantastic. Nice to see you in here. Oh, you're rebuilding a V Star right now. Nice. Love it. Love it. We should hang out, Martin. So, um, Angel uh, Tinia says, Hello. Thank you for all the info. My YouTube channel reached a thousand subscribers. Boom. Another first 1,000 subscribers in here. Love it. High fives and fist bump to you for uh, for your first 1,000. You know, the thing, you know, when you cross 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, like, it's it's awesome because, one, not only is that one check mark down for getting into the partner program, but, like, it's a proof of concept. So, like, if you can get 1,000 people that you don't know to subscribe to your YouTube channel, that proves that you can do the thing. So, now, it's just filling in the blanks of time between now and your next, you know, milestone. So, uh, and, you know, tweaking things over time time, you know, all that good stuff. But like the fact that you have a thousand people that are already on board. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, you know, keep going, keep learning, keep, you know, applying the different things that you learn, keep trying to figure it out. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll hit a hundred. If you can, if you can reach a thousand, you can reach a hundred thousand and, and a million and, and all of that. It's just filling in the time and the content it says, yeah, those road Kings are so heavy. Oh, you tipped on one too. Yeah. They're, they're super heavy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Super, super heavy. Um, let's see here. So next up um, on our list here, run number 18, we actually got that one to run number 19, um, says the key King uh, CMC TV. Um, they do daily content. They do gaming content. The goal is to monetize. Um, let's see here really quick. So um, Jason says, uh, moving away from tech reviews and into perhaps some newsy content as well as building a couple how-to courses. Will a news show, 15 to 20 minutes, have legs in your opinion? It could. I, I do that. I started doing news on this channel, and they do okay. So one thing when it comes to news is that it's temporary, right? 
So in terms of like people subscribing for it, things like that, they do. But in terms of that content, like bringing value, like for the next, like, you know, five years, like other content does, um, it doesn't really have that, which is a similar thing that you probably run into, you know, in your, in your other content. So I would definitely, while you're doing the news, if you can think of, you know, something else to do as well, I would try to mix in something that would be evergreen as well as doing your live streams, um, you know, for your news. So, or, or, or news, I don't know if you're doing them live or not, but um, but I would definitely, you know, try to think of something you can do that would be evergreen as well so that, so that the content that you have doesn't have just a very short shelf life. Um, because like with my news, even though some of it will still get views, it just doesn't hold like the actual video content does. Um, just because, you know, the con the video content's evergreen, you know, most of it stays relevant for a decent amount of time. Um, so because of that, like I can, I can just keep getting views on that stuff for a long time. Whereas with the news, it's like good for that moment in time, maybe a little bit after, and then most of it ends up being like not relevant anymore. So, um, so because of that, just keep in mind that you're getting into you know, that you're getting into that, um, which might be why you're moving away from tech in the first place is because tech has like a similar nature to it. Unless you're showing people like how to use the tech, because if it's tech that people would keep buying over time, then in that case, you know, if you're talking about something that people can still buy for the next three years, then in that case, like a video on how to set it up and use it, and all that stuff would still apply, right? So it has more of a lifespan than the actual content. So I would definitely just keep that in mind and try to keep up with something else. So, so like you do your news, but I would try to come up with something else that would just be a little bit more um, evergreen as well. Unless you just want to stay on that that grind, right? But me, like I enjoy, um, which which this live stream experiment that I'm doing, um, it's keeping me on that hamster wheel, which I'm not a huge fan of. Like I like being able to like, you know, hey, let's, you know, get a couple of videos out um, or just get them in the can. And then that way I can just kind of like chill out. Um, going like really hard on live streams, um, it kind of takes that away to where like you got to be there all the time, right? So, um, so, you know, there's that too. So keep those things in mind. Petty Talks TV, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. Um, but the uh, channel that we're looking at here, King CMC TV says, if using um, keyword search in TubeBuddy, my keyword is Apex Legends. Should I search Apex Legends and not Apex Legends live stream as the title? Then in the SEO part, I can just put Apex Legends live. Yeah, so when you are using TubeBuddy's Keyword Explorer, you wanna look for Apex Legends and see you know, how you, um, how you, you know, fare out there. But you also wanna make sure that you're also, like if you're going to be targeting people looking for an Apex Legends live stream, keep in mind like like when it comes to people actively searching out an apex legends live stream it's probably not going to be something unless there's like a big event happening in the game to where while you're live you're going to have tons of people searching for that unless it's during a big event so for example like fortnite just updated for their battle royale they added like this whole new city to it really cool like awesome update um and as part of that you know for the people that were on top of that and they were streaming that like as they got access to it and all of that like there was a lot of you know there's always a lot of hype around that particular game when they have those big updates because people are just trying to see like all the new stuff so if it's a situation like that then optimizing with live stream attached while you're live while you're you know doing that coverage that's a good call but if it's like hey i'm i'm doing a, a just a, a i'm just going to be streaming this live but I'm just doing like a let's play, then in that case, try to optimize it around something for the game. And just in general, like if you're doing like, you know, gaming content, try to think of like, okay, I can have some streams where I'm doing entertainment, but what other streams got to do to where I'm actually like showing people stuff or maybe challenging, you know, challenging myself for certain things, like getting through with one life, getting through with one weapon, getting through, you know, like in certain amounts of time, those types of things to where when people come into it, there's more of a reason for them to want to stick around. Like, hey, I wonder if they're going to be able to accomplish this, right? So just create it's that you know additional reason for people to come and and, and and participate. Jason, thank you for the uh, super oh sticker. Appreciate it. Um, me troll TV is the uh, next channel. They do everything. Is the type of channel. The goal is to share life. And the question is, can random content succeed? It can absolutely. Here's the thing: when it comes to YouTube, like random content can succeed, meaning that videos that you publish on your channel they have the potential as long as people enjoy them to do you know very well the difficult part is sustainability because you know anybody can you know put together like you know a couple of good videos but the, the like continually over long periods of time putting out good content that people continually respond to over time um, that's hard to do and it becomes increasingly more difficult to do when you start 
when you start randomizing everything to where there's no real consistency with what it is that you're doing and you are the only consistent thing. Like when you're first getting started, that might seem like, okay, well, hey, I actually wanna build my channel around me. Then, you know, that might seem like the right thing to do, but in reality, you gotta get people's attention. You gotta pull them in and introduce them to you. So in order for people to, you know, come and get to know and like and trust you, you gotta get them to meet you in the first place. So because of that, you have to make videos about things that other people are also interested in so that they'll want to click on those videos and come in and, and, and meet you. And then from there, once you start getting momentum, then you can experiment with dropping in more personal content to where they can get to know you, you know, even better. And then you can kind of slowly do more of that and less of the other stuff if you wanted to, you know, move in that direction. But um, when it comes to like getting started, though, it's really helpful if you just pick like, you know, a topic, and you're like, hey, this is going to be the thing that's going to, you know, that I'm going to use to introduce myself to people, right? Um, let's see here. So next up on our list here, we're on number 21, just rolling right through these. We've got event yours of spirits. Um, event yours of spirit says they do one week or more for their uploads. They do spirit tastings, tastings, all oh, spirit. Ta uh, okay. Sorry. Um, the goal of the channel, I was thinking like spirit tape, like that, that didn't even make sense to me there for a second, but yeah, I, I, I see what you're doing there now. Um, <laughs> providing information while exploring and tasting spirits from across the globe. Um, the question is, I'm a new YouTuber, less than 60 days. Welcome to YouTube, so, to the creator side of YouTube. It says, um, my channel is about exploring spirits from across the globe. However, I would like to make a video in reference to all of the to do, the not to do's and all of the errors I made starting my YouTube channel. If I make a video about my errors, will it mess up the algorithm that's been pretty consistent in, ref in reference to my tastings? Yeah, I would not make a video about your YouTube channel on a YouTube channel that is made to serve people that are interested in spirits or spirits tastings. Um, it, when you are publishing videos to your YouTube channel, like make them, like every piece of content that you publish that isn't in um, alignment with the audience that you're trying to reach, is one opportunity to send your channel in the complete wrong direction. Because let's say that you publish that video um, about the mistakes that you made with your channel. Let's say that it does well. Let's say that that ends up being the best video on your YouTube channel. What's going to end up happening is you're gonna have people that all, that came in, subscribe for that, that's gonna be driving your channel. Like everybody that's coming, a lot of the people or majority of the people coming into your channel, they're gonna be coming in from that. What's going to happen in that case is you would grow an audience of people that don't care about spirits that don't care about spirit tastings they care about like watching some video about you know something that somebody did to mess up their channel um so which would also be another mistake by the way <laughs> so because of that you definitely want to make sure that you are um you, you want to make sure that you are uh you know everything you're publishing is in alignment with the people that you're trying to reach Jason says, I think we need an updated studio tour. Lots of sweetness happening over there and I need the durst. Yeah, so um, um, I'm considering doing a studio tour um, uh, sometime in the future. Um, but on my channel, for some reason, those typically don't do that great. I, I guess I'm just not good at putting the, that type of content together. But when I do like studio hacks and like those types of things, um, they typically don't do that great on my channel. But just for the sake of getting it out there, you know, yeah, might as well if I, you know, cause I don't, I don't have a tour since I've moved in here. Um, I don't have a tour um, of this particular setup. So it'll at least be a, you know, a video that I could put out. Something to reference when people are like, Hey, what do you use for this? What do you use for this? Then I can have that video full breakdown filled with links in the description. All good, Roberto coming in uh, whenever you're ready, man. Um, let's see here. So next up, we have how we got here genealogy. Brian says um, they do family history content. The goal of the channel is to help people learn about their own family history to understand the impact it has on greater history. And the question is, um, quick question with YouTube guidelines on profanity using classic symbols to represent profanity. Acceptable example uh, thumb on this video. To be on the safe side, I wouldn't even do that. Um, it's probably fine. But um, but if it was me, I wouldn't do it just for the sake of like and eh, just being on the safe side. Um, in fact, I have a video that I published recently. Um, it was a live stream where I talked about how they changed the rules. I was going to do exactly what you just did in your thumbnail, um, but I didn't. Instead, I put censored um, across my mouth instead of putting those because I was going to put those. Um, but the reason I didn't was like, eh, you know what? It's probably fine because it's just like symbols, but because it does represent that, I don't know how like weird the system is. Um, one thing that you might want to do 
is in a members only live stream, um, I showed everybody, and I think you were there for this, um, Google Cloud Vision. So um, one thing that you might wanna do is go run that through Google Cloud Vision and just see how it interprets that. Um, and just kinda, so then you'll at least have a little bit of information on like, you know, what that system is seeing with your thumbnail um, so that you can just kind of use that as kind of like, okay, it's just seeing these as letters and symbols, so I'm probably like good to go. Um, let's see here. Next up, next up on our list, um, we've got um, Jamie's ASMR. Um, they do ASMR content. The goal of the channel says seems like a fun hobby. And uh, the question is, hey, Nick, I hope that you're doing awesome. I looked at Google Trends like you recommended in a previous live stream. It looks like ASMR search volume on YouTube is at an all-time high, which is, a, which is great for me. There's a huge amount of ASMR channels around. I've made one long-form video, made two shorts from the same video. I gained 13 subs from those. What advice do you have to take advantage of the current high search volume in this niche? So high search volume can be interpreted in two different ways. One is like, okay, there's a lot of people searching for this, therefore I'm going to make search targeted videos for people to be able to find me. The other is people are really into ASMR, therefore I'm gonna try to get as much recommendation traffic as possible. So therefore I wanna make sure that I'm putting the word like ASMR, um, in my, you know, in my, uh, in my, you know, title, I want to make sure that I'm putting, you know, that information in my description, and I got to make sure I'm making as good, like the ASMR videos that I'm making are competitive with the other videos that are out there. You know, I heard a reference the other day, um, and I, and I was thinking like, man, that applies to YouTube so much. So the reference was about, um, like, like if somebody goes to play a sport they're not gonna be led on the team unless they can play at a competitive level. Um, if somebody is doing like anything to where, you know, there's already like an established standard for that thing, they're not going to be able to efficiently do that thing until they can do it at a level that's competitive for that thing or standard for that thing. And like YouTube's the same exact way. So, you know, when it comes to the content that we're putting out, we have to be able to make our content at a, you know, in a way that people respond to it in a way that's competitive for the platform, right? So um, so when it comes to your case, just the fact that you're making ASMR videos by itself is a win. Um, in your case specifically, since you are doing ASMR content, make sure that you're hyper-focused on your audio. Um, so make sure that you're doing the whole binaural thing or and like all the different stuff that they're doing for ASMR. Get super focused on your audio. Learn how to process your audio and learn how to make it sound as good as you possibly can. Because when it comes to ASMR, you have to where you can just, you know, like brush on things and all of that. But then you can actually put that into audio processing software like um, Adobe Audition or like Logic Pro if you're on a Mac, something like that. And you can actually like fine tune it to really make things sound like really amazing. So because of that, I would just spend tons of time learning how to make um, you know, how, how to process your audio so that not only you're recording it, but then you're also taking out like the, you know, any additional noise that's in there. You're able to, you know, kind of pump up, you know, different parts of the frequencies in order to make, you know, certain things stand out based on, you know, the feelings you're trying to trigger and all that. Um, I would focus really hard on that. But once you have all that down, which you might already, um, the next thing that I would do is I would also start interacting in the ASMR subreddit on Reddit. Um, and, and there's a bunch of them. So I would start interacting over there and just start to, to pay attention to the different things people are talking about. Don't spam your content there, um, at least not yet. Like, you know, make sure that what you're doing is competitive. And then once it's competitive, then go over there to the different ASMR um, subreddits and look and see what's acceptable, you know, in terms of people posting and all of that. Um, but more importantly, go look for all the details about the things that people care about, they like, they don't like, they hate, they love um, about ASMR. Look about the creators that they talk about that they love versus the ones that they talk about that they don't like that much and start to try to uncover like what it is that they really get into versus what they don't so that you can leverage, you know, all the different things they get into. So some people will start channels like that and they won't do that type of, you know, um, homework and they'll just kind of do what they, you know, think might be best. Um, but, you know, the best thing that you can do in that scenario is to understand the people that are like really into it and what it is that they enjoy. Um, in addition to that, make sure you're reading the comments on all the ASMR videos, um, you know, that, 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 that you like. Make sure you're reading the comments and all of those that you're looking for all those little nuanced details about the things that people love and don't let, love about that type of content. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list here, 
We've got uh, Jabby and Jammy. Jabby and Jammy, um, they have a travel channel. Um, the goal of the channel is being able to visit all the places in our country and show them to the world in addition to being able to grow financially with that. Um, the question is, hello, Nick. What's going on? I hope you're awesome. Says, um, we are a Cuban couple, and on our channel, we visit different places in Cuba and give our opinion about it so that people know if it's worth going to or not. Um, our target audience is tourists who plan to visit Cuba and want to know which places to visit. What advice can you give us to grow our channel? Um, give give them what they want. Like if um, if a tourist is going to be coming there, then you want to make sure that you're providing content about things that they would want to know. So what you want to do is you want to hop on Reddit and look for any subreddits around Cuba. You want to hop on Facebook, look for any Facebook groups around Cuba, and you want to look for anything else online that you can possibly find where tourists would be, you know, asking questions and wanting to know more about going to Cuba. And then you want to start going through all of those questions and you want to start making videos for every single one of those questions that people have. Um, and then that way, when people are looking for that information, they'll end up finding you through a uh, YouTube search for some of it. Some of it you will be YouTube recommending your content as well. But the very first step would be going and answering every single one of those questions that you can find um, about Cuba. Next, um, we've got uh, That Goth Farmer. Um, they do home skidding skills as the type of channel. The goal of the channel is to inspire people to take their food security into their own hands. The question is, I have my break from my seven to seven job planned. Um, I'll be taking two weeks to produce content and my goal is to let at least a month's worth of content, um, to get at least a month's worth of content made, but two to three is ideal so I can repeat the process at that time. The hope is to get ahead so I can take some time creating quality content and take out the stress of shooting and editing in the same week around the other job. Any tips on how I should plan this break for optimal production? So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and research before you take this break. So you want to research on, um, on everything within the space that you're going into. You want to study the other channels so you can go and see the videos that are popular on the channel within the last like six months to a year. So the idea is to go and um, go to their channel pages, go to their um, videos tab and just click on the popular button. And that's gonna show you like all the popular videos um, that that are on those channels. So you wanna do that on all of the different, you know, channels that make content like you're planning to make or like you're making right now. Um, go look at all of their popular content and write it all down. And you're gonna start noticing like, huh, when, when all of these channels make videos about these types of things, people typically respond to them at a pretty high rate. And you wanna start prioritizing those types of videos with what it is that you're doing because those are kind of proven earners, so to speak, when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, people, you know, enjoying that content. So you definitely want to make sure that you're that you're doing that type of thing. Um, in addition to that, um, as you're doing that, you also want to do a little bit of research um, using Google Trends, using um, uh, TubeBuddy um, to where if you are going after search for any of this, then you wanna make sure that you are doing the research on what keywords or keyword phrases that you're gonna use. Um, you wanna make sure that you are, um, um, that you're thinking of all of the different topics that you're going to be talking about. And that when you're thinking of those topics that you're also thinking of the thumbnails that you're going to make for those topics and that you're also thinking of how you're going to package those up in the title as well so like you you have your idea here and then you want to think next okay so these are all the ideas that i have now let me draw a line over here and then i'm going to kind of write out like what it is that i would you know like what it is that i would focus on in the thumbnail to help people identify that it's that type of content um, and then this is what the title is going to be for that video, or at least here's some options of titles for that particular video. And then you want to start defining why that particular thumbnail would cause somebody to stop and look at it um, or possibly click. And you want to define with every single title that you write why you think it is that the people that you're trying to reach would find that compelling and want to click on it. Um, so you want to do that um, for the stuff on the outside. And then everything else is going to happen when you're actually, you know, um, recording and editing the content for the actual videos. Um, next up, we've got Her Heel Review. Her Heel, blah, 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 blah. Her Heel Review does um, movie and TV reviews. The goal of the channel is to help viewers find good movies and TV shows um, and to reach 1,000 subscribers. And the question is, what do I do if I seem to have hit a plateau at 680 subscribers? Keep going. Keep going, right? Like, uh, you know, like, uh, let's say that, and I'm not saying that this is, you know, you, but let's say somebody goes to the gym. I think it was my brother that made a reference like this uh, this week. But let's say you have somebody that goes to the gym. They're in the gym and they're like, you know, hey, they're in there, you know, like working it out, you know, like whatever. And they hit like a plateau at the gym. Let's say they're trying to lose weight and they hit a plateau. Well, that doesn't mean like, well, hit this plateau. So, you know, I'm just kind of like stuck here, right? 
instead they're like, okay, well, I got to change my diet. Maybe, maybe I got to start working out more. Maybe I got to start doing more cardio. Maybe I got to lower my, you know, uh, my calories in, um, since, you know, I'm not getting as much, you know, calories out happening. Um, but you know, when you identify that, then it's like, okay, what do I got to do? And then you start, you know, trying to solve that problem. So in your case, if you hit that plateau of 680 subscribers, just go and start looking like, okay, what videos or, or what movies and TV shows are, you know, getting the most activity? What videos drove my subscribers to my YouTube channel? And then start experimenting with different stuff. Like when you have a plateau, on your YouTube channel, it can be discouraging because you kind of hit this like glass ceiling and you're like, oh, this is like as far as it goes. Um, but in reality, it just means that like with what it is that you're doing right now and how you're doing things right now, that's just how people are responding. So if you want people to respond differently, in a lot of cases, you have to do something that's either a little bit different or a lot different in order to, you know, kind of break through those. So because of that, if there's a way that you've been doing things, try to break it, try to do something that's different, still serve the same audience, but try to break, you know, try to break the way that you're doing things. For example, if you've been structuring your videos in one way, try to change it up a little bit. If you've been shooting your videos in the same location to where it's, just, you know, just something to where it's like you sitting there, try shooting it in your living room and talking about it in, in like a different way. If you're, if you, if your videos are really typically, you know, typically like really fast and snappy, try slowing them down a little bit. Um, if they're typically slow, try making them fast and snappy and putting words all over them and, you know, all of those types of things. Um, but like if, if what it is that is currently happening on your channel is, is just kind of stagnant, then in that case, the only way that you're going to get out of that is to, um, is to experiment and, and, and work your way out of it, so to speak. Um, nothing ever happens till it does. The only thing that stops you is you. Fantastic uh, quote there from Smoke and Ivories. Absolutely. What gear? Hey, what's going on, man? Hope you're doing awesome. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list here, we've got, um, let's see here. This is, this is Tom's World is the, uh, is the name of the channel. They do, let's see here. Exploring history and the goal of the channel is to preserve historical and wooded areas on video and inform. And the question is, as an exploring slash history channel, just about to hit the monetization point, um, what advice can you give to get the most out of the monetization process? So the process itself is pretty cut and dry. Like once you hit the requirements, you're gonna have a little notification pop up letting you know that you, you know, that you've uh, you know, um hit the requirements. Then you just have to go through their process of, you know, applying for monetization. They're gonna review it and they'll give you a yes or no. Um, and then from there, it comes down to, you know, just continuing to make content and continuing to do the thing. Um, one thing I can tell you is the more ads that you add to your video, the more money that you're gonna make. Um, so for example, if you just add the skippable ads at the front and you do not add the non-skippables, then in that case, you are going to cut into your, you know, revenue, but you are going to be prioritizing the viewers in that case. But in other cases, if you're like, Hey, um, I'm just going to check all the boxes and I'm just going to let YouTube run ads like they do. Then in that case, you're going to give yourself, you know, the best option to make as most money as you possibly can from YouTube ads. Um, I go back and forth on mine. So just like everybody else, just like every other content creator, I have different goals for my channel, different times. And um, sometimes the goals is like, okay, hey, let's get the, you know, let's get the revenue up a little bit. And in that particular case, during those times, you know, I may, um, you know, run more ads or more different ad types um, on my videos to where typically if I was just doing skippables, then maybe, you know, I would have a period of time through certain blocks of content where I would do, uh, you know, non-skippables as well. So, you know, it just comes down to, you know, making those types of calls, but then you also have other things you can do where you are, you know, prioritizing content based on CPMs and things like that. Um, if the goal is, um, you know, if the goal from what it is that you're doing um, is, is revenue. And if that was the, uh, if that was the thing. At last, the Sith Lord of YouTube, Roberto Blake. Roberto Blake in the house. What is going on, my man? Hope that you are doing fantastic. Nice to see you here. Are you on a treadmill? Yes, I am. Standing desk mode on the treadmill. How's my audio? That's what I'm talking about. Your audio sounds juicy, man. Love it. Sounds sounds fantastic. Yep. Let me just adjust this slightly. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Roberto Blake. Um, so Roberto Blake, um, he also makes, you know, content um, for creatives. So, you know, mo like a lot of his content is for like YouTube content creators, but he also helps out, you know, creatives, but he's a, a consultant. Um, he has all kinds of different like resources for content creators at awesomecreatoracademy.com. Um, so, you know, he's got all kinds of stuff um, that helps out content creators. And he's like, uh, uh, like his area of expertise, so to speak, um, is monetization when it comes to YouTube, just like 
like creator economy in general. So if you are, you know, a business owner and you're watching this, or if you're a content creator who just wants to make more money from what it is that you're doing, make sure you check out Roberto and all this, all the stuff that he has to offer. I uh, appreciate Roberto, the plug, Nick. How's life treating you, man? I feel like I should be like standing up, like walking around or something like while, uh, you know, while you're, while you're going here. 10,000 steps. Um, emotional support water bottle. Nice. Plenty of protein. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. So, hey, man, you going to help me um, answer some questions here? I would love to. I would absolutely love okay. to. Okay. All right. Here we go then. Um, so, we're going to go for um, this very first one here. So, I'm um, lost, uh, lost in play. Sorry, lost in play games. Um, lost in play games does party games. The goal of the channel is sharing ideas of different parties that people can throw to entertain family and friends at home. And the question is, I want to pivot content. Um, currently they're at 1.5 thousand subscribers from their board game niche. And they say that my new content is about game shows. What advice do you have on pivoting? Roberto Blake. Pivoting is something that is extremely challenging because you have to consider that this is literally like changing majors in college or starting over. The good news is your channel is probably likely already monetized and you also um, are at a relatively low overall subscriber count. Uh, so that would probably be the plus side here. The downside is that the audience will be confused, meaning that less people who are already subscribed to you will respond to your content. And that could be indicative of how YouTube views the performance and the relevancy of your content. And since it's not getting response, YouTube might um, evaluate and say, hmm, we're struggling to find people who like this video because we're testing it against your subscribers. If you're going to go this route, and usually I'm more of the, hey, if you're going to completely change up everything you do, and it's a completely new audience, um, I'm usually for just starting a new channel because I don't think you can take, um, you know, start, Hey, I'm going to be a vegan restaurant. And then, you know what? Changed my mind. Um, you know, I'm losing too much weight and uh, barbecue joint. It is. I don't think that that works, <laughs> but if you're going to do it, uh, there's a feature in YouTube, go watch Nick's video on YouTube settings. And when you do uploads, if you're going to pivot and change your niche, as much as it's going to hurt at first, what you might want to do is just uh, publish your videos without sending notifications to subscribers. That way, YouTube has to algorithmically work from the very beginning from nothing to understand who this is valuable for without evaluating it against your existing subscriber base, which means that it will be very slow to get any views at all on that video going forward, and that's going to hurt your feelings. Starting over on a new channel is for your mental health a lot of times because you have no expectations starting from nothing, but it's going to hurt. You're going to see that you have um, 1500 subscribers and you're going to feel like, wow, I'm getting like 10, 20 views on this new niche, but it might build up to more over time as YouTube learns the audience. And from what I've seen, you can take 10, it can take somewhere between 10 and 30 videos for YouTube to learn how to serve an audience and you have to sometimes make 10 to 30 videos for the same group of people before YouTube can figure out how to reach that audience. So uh, that's why it takes a while, everybody. That's why you need to be patient. That's also why if you're all over the place and you don't serve one group of people, it takes longer to grow on YouTube, which is why we say niche down somewhat as a shortcut. I know people are multi-passionate, they're multifaceted, but the problem is if it takes 10 to 30 to figure out this group of people, the longer you take to go 10 to 30 deep on one group of people, the longer it takes for YouTube to know how to serve the audience properly. So the longer it takes for you to grow. So that's my advice. Boom. Um, so engineer your life. Um, thanks for the super chat. It says, super um, I sent a question through the forum, tried numerous uh, variations here, no success, maybe symbols. Um, hopefully you can get to it. Um, if you can just drop the question in here, um, then uh, if you can just go ahead and just drop the question. Um, like typically when you leave a super chat, you can just put the question in there. So if you can just drop it in here, as long as the characters allow for it, um, then feel free and we'll just go ahead and get it answered. Uh, we'll go ahead and get it answered for you. Because with the uh, form here, if I, if I start skipping through, then I'm going to end up like missing, you know, a bunch of people that ask questions in there. So feel free um for engineer your life to just go ahead and drop the question in the uh, chat and then we'll uh we'll get it, we'll get it uh, answered for you so um our next great answer there on the uh pivot um so one thing um to add to what roberto mentioned is 
Uh, what YouTube recommends also when it comes to pivoting your channel is like a 70, 20, 10 approach. So they recommend like 70% of the content that you're putting out is like the traditional stuff that you normally do. Um, 20% is like heading in the direction that you want to go. And then 10% is like wildly experimental in the direction that you want to go. So it's content that you wouldn't typically make like all the time, but it's content that might get you in front of that right audience that's interested in that um, that type of content. Um, so that's that's YouTube's recommendation on, on what you should... Uh, or that's the things that YouTube recommends when it comes to people pivoting channels um, as well, like, you know, to, to put some, uh, you know, numbers behind it in terms of like, you know, how many videos to do what to, to, to put you in that direction. Um, so the next question that we have here is from just add more butter. I can support that as, as, as Roberto is here on a treadmill with a thing like being healthy with water. I'm like, yes, add more butter. <laughs> But uh, we got uh, we have bookie, uh, baking and cooking content. The goal of the channel is income. Um, this is this is great. This is right up uh, right up uh, Roberto's wheelhouse here. Oh yeah. Um, and the question is, when I'm uploading a new video and I'm filling out the details in the details page in the tag section, is it still considered tag stuffing? If I essentially tag stuff in that designated area, um, I use a generator to fill in that area, and not a lot of the tags generated are, and a lot of the tags are very similar to each other. So I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this in Roberto. So like when it comes to the tags, that's what that box is made for. Um, so you're fine filling up that box um, if you want to, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to spend like tons and tons of time on that box. Um, so right. just use a tool like TubeBuddy or any other tool that you're using um, to, you know, just quickly go through that. And then um, that's all that's all you really need to do. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And also guys, you need to consider tags are not necessarily for views. Tags serve other purposes. As an advertiser, I can tell you that advertisers, we still buy keywords for ads on YouTube uh, that match to keywords in the video. So understand that tags are not for views. They serve other classification purposes. Next on our list here, we've got, uh, let's see here, Abundant Joy Tarot. Tarot? Um, yeah, they do tarot. tarot and spiritual readings. Yep. Um, the goal of the channel is to provide a uh, regular tarot and oracle readings to support your soul journey to joy, love, and abundance. And the question is, where are good places to advertise my channel to grow my subscribers? Any ideas for social media? I'm brand new. So Do not when it comes to, yeah, when it comes to advertising your, your videos, um, you don't want to advertise them. Um, the reason for this is because when you put a bunch of money behind your videos, but you haven't learned how to get people to click on what it is that you're doing yet, you haven't learned to make content that's competitive for the platform where YouTube will continue to show your videos to more people because people are, are, are responding to that flow in terms of clicking on it, coming into the content, enjoying the content, maybe engaging with the you know channel in some way. If you haven't learned how to do that yet, then what's going to happen is as soon as you turn off your advertising spend, then everything's going to stop because let's say that you spent a bunch of money, you ended up getting a bunch of subscribers and a bunch of people interacting with your channel. Well, the next step is that these next videos that you publish, YouTube's going to present them to some of those people. And if you still haven't learned that process yet of getting people to respond organically, then nobody's going to nobody's gonna click on them. Right. And then let's say that you're like, hey, I got some people clicking, but then you haven't learned the process yet of, you know, making the, the video content that people enjoy and, you know, to where you don't have to advertise. Um, then in that particular case, then what's going to happen is even if they do click and they come in, you'll see like Tam getting some views, but then your videos are just going to die quickly because people aren't, you know, responding well to the actual video content. So there's no way to shortcut the process of learning how to get attention organically on YouTube. Yes, you can throw money at it. Um, once you learn how to, you know, make effective content if you choose to, but once you learn how to make effective content, you won't have to. So because of that, I just recommend that you learn how to do it all organically. And, and that skill set is going to make what it is that you're doing sustainable. And it's going to make it where you don't have to spend money on ads. Roberto, any additional thoughts on that? So my additional thoughts on that. We, got, we be, have multi-camera exercise footage right here. This is great. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's like I just thought I'd do that to be uh, clever there. But what I, what I would say is that um, advertising, the purpose of advertising says is you can use advertising to grow your email list or to sell a product. But you do not want to try to use it to grow an audience on YouTube because what you want is you want the YouTube algorithm to work for you. You want to identify the audience. You want that to happen naturally. And like Nick said, once you turn on that faucet of money and you turn it off, they have no incentive for you to really get organic reach at that point. So I wouldn't turn on that money hose to try to direct it to that. The other thing is it turns off people, to be honest with you, um, that non-organic audience is not loyal. 
Boom. Next question that we have here. Um, this is from, uh, let's see here. Oh, if you're not um, talking about me. paid, if you're talking about outreach, if you're talking about outreach, um, then don't worry about that either because you're, you're not at a position early on to um, worry about or do outreach. And the thing is, it's hard to also transfer loyalty from one person to another. I wouldn't worry about it until you've really deeply established your own credibility. So um, I would say that when you're getting 1,000 new subscribers plus a month, 2,000 new subscribers plus a month, you're building up some credibility. And then at that point, you're growing well enough. You're growing fast enough to not really need anybody else. Shout outs are not what they used to be in the YouTube ecosystem. I would say that if they were, you're talking about deep collab, deep collaborations, that could be different. But you're probably better off, literally, especially if you're in a tarot card niche, you're probably much better off just tapping into pop culture and celebrities than trying to collab with other content creators or do any kind of outreach or do any kind of paid marketing. It's better to probably just siphon from um, famous celebrities at this point. So uh, really quick, Steph Traveler says, can you confirm that you've never bought subscribers? Yes, I can. I can confirm that for you. Yes. Well, for one thing, if nothing else, if you don't believe that we're honest, you'd better believe we're cheap. So yeah, right. me and Nick have never bought <laughs> subscribers because like to be very real, outside of YouTube stuff that we buy, we're just cheap. <laughs> right, right. So um, really quick. Um, so I think the question um, coming from, um, I, cause I, I see Doug posted it for me in here. Um, I think the question, um, that came from, um, engineer your life yeah. says I uploaded my first long video, um, 11 minutes a month ago. It has 5,129 views, 140 subscribers, 4% click through rate, 40% retention. I know it varies, but general thoughts. Um, so general thoughts are that you have, hold on. So 5,000 views, you have a 4% click through rate. Um, your click through rate is is low for the amount of views that you have. Um, that means that with the impressions that you have on that, that's also going to be relatively low. Um, and 4% click through rate is, is pretty low depending on where that four is coming from. So like if you have other factors, this is why it's important to look in your traffic sources reports. But if you have, you know, like other places that are pulling that number down, then, you know, then that 4% might be okay. But what you want to do is you want to look in your traffic sources and you want to see what's happening there. Because, you know, you might find that you have like a decent, you know, click through rate on like, you know, um, browse or suggested, um, but like everywhere else it's low, which is pulling that average down that you might be seeing. So because of that, you want to make sure that when you are looking at your click through rate, that you're looking at the specific traffic sources, because when you're looking at that average out view, it can be really misleading. Um, so just make sure that you're looking in there. But in terms of like, you know, 40% retention, I'm not sure. Okay. An 11 minute video yeah that, that's a great start like that's that's solid it means you made um, an enjoyable video you probably just have a very not great um thumbnail yeah it could be thumbnail could be title could title. be topic you know yeah like when it comes to when it comes to your click-through rate you know there's there's different variables there like some people you know will think that like it's only the thumbnail but you know the topic matters um the timing matters the thumbnail itself matters the title matters like all of those things make up people deciding if they're going to click on it or not i'm guessing um, so thumbnail because of in that, this case because of his retention rate being so good it means that people's expectations were met on the title it may not be super super enticing but it was accurate enough it could be the topic or the thumbnail most likely because you're absolutely right nick the variables matter yeah yeah absolutely and uh, is that your is that your dog because it's not popcorn sounds super no. cute it sounds no, like a small one what, what is it that's phoebe she's yeah phoebe. she's a little yeah, she's a little, um, you know, like a teacup terrier. So nice, nice, nice. Love it. Yeah, super cute sounding. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like a, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a dog enthusiast. So like, I hear that and I'm like, oh, yep. sounds, sounds so cute. Yep. Um, okay, so next up, um, we have, and um, and I, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the, uh, that was the question from Engineer Your Life. Um, Engineer Your Life. If that was not yours, um, then you know, then definitely, uh, definitely let me know. Um, but the next question that we have here, we did Yevo already. My form almost locked up. There we go. So um, next up, we have um, Teach Me Dutch. Teach Me Dutch. Dutch does educational content. The goal of the channel is for people to want to learn Dutch. And the question is, what is your advice for a new YouTube channel to be on other platforms as well, such as TikTok and Insta? Do you think it's better to focus on YouTube first? Roberto Blake. Be platform agnostic if you're doing this type of vertical short form content. If you do vertical short 
platform content, then what you want to do is you want to be truly platform agnostic. And what you want to do is you want to make content for a short form audience instead of a platform. In general, the best advice is to make um, platform agnostic content, which means not using the word subscribe or using YouTuber like language in any of your mentions and call to action. So you don't have to edit it out later or worry about it. So what you want to do is you want to use ubiquitous language or universal language. So you want to say things like comment down below, description down below, like, share, comment, because those are universal across all platforms. And YouTube itself is kind of trying to streamline itself to where it's kind of um, more universal. Like other platforms don't have dislike counters, neither does YouTube now. So it's all streamlined now to where all the platforms are very similar. And what differentiates them is minor features, monetization, culture, and some of these other things. So what you wanna do is if you're doing like short form vertical video, Oh, there's no real time wasted posting it everywhere. Just streamline that process. And the more important thing is build your brand instead of building someone else's platform, someone else's company. Where you reach people matters. And don't worry that, oh, I'm stealing views from YouTube. I multi-stream with StreamYard across five different platforms all at the same time. And my recent live streams have gotten 50 to 100,000 views, which is insane. While streaming to other platforms, I'm not stealing attention from YouTube by posting my content everywhere else that will pay me for it or that will yeah, get you're making reach. it more accessible. Yeah, yeah exactly. you're making it more accessible. Exactly. So it's also another way to put the audience first, by the way, is care about where they are. When they're not on YouTube, they're somewhere. And when you're not there, you're not reaching them. So I would just be a very audience first content creator. I'd be platform agnostic and not a platform loyalist platforms seduce you into saying, I want to run up my numbers on this platform. I want to be a big creator on this platform because that's their, that's how they entice you to do what's in their best interest. What's in your best interest is to go wherever people you want to reach are. So that's, what you know, what's funny you. with that is there's this app, somebody that I know here locally was like, Hey, there's this app out. It's kind of like TikTok. Um, it's called clapper. And, um, to be honest, it's not a great app, but I'm like, Hey, let's just put some stuff over there, right? Because I'm like, you know, for the for the vertical videos that I do and, um, you know, like it's still, you know, gotten, you know, like some of them, you know, get a decent amount of views on them, um, you know, a thousand, you know, more followers over there. So like all of the people that are interacting with me over here, like they might not, they might not have ever ran across my content on YouTube or like anywhere else. So when you start, you know, putting your videos elsewhere, it gives you that opportunity to be able to, you know, possibly, you know, reach new people that might not have ever found you um, on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, definitely a good move. Yeah. Um, so real tea. Oh, wait, here we go. Um, so uh, engineer your life Super says, trash. thanks so much. And hey, also oh, that was their question. Okay, cool. Says, thanks so much. And hi to Roberto. Had a coaching call with him a few months ago, but getting started now. Maybe he'll remember I'm a fellow nerd female computer engineer. <laughs> nice. Little, little endorsement there uh, for yeah. Uh, Roberto. So yeah, I'm sure you got good. tons of value out of that. I've yes. never talked to somebody that's gotten a, a, that's gotten a consult with, uh, with Roberto that has not been like thrilled um, afterwards. Yeah. So real tea um, is the next uh, the next question that we have on our list. It's um, the type of channels and informative informative channel updates on daily lives of YouTube creators and celebrities. The goal of the channel is to give my viewers valuable information. I want to grow my channel so I'm able to branch off and start a podcast. The question is, how am I able to get my viewers to subscribe? I get a lot of returning views, but they aren't subscribing much. How do I keep my views consistent? Thank you for your hard work and dedication to your channel. I'm new to YouTube and your page has been very helpful. When is your next monetization live? Um, I think that's scheduled for next week. Um, I'm in need to help out on my channel. Um, I am in need of help on what my channel may not be approved for. Got it. Um, thank you and keep up the great work. Um, so when it comes to people like returning to your channel, ultimately, that's what you want. I mean, of course, you want subscribers because it unlocks features of YouTube. Plus, you get the perks in terms of play buttons, you know, access to partner managers, things like that as, you know, things grow down the road. Um, so, you know, those things are, you know, an important to extent. But really, the fact that you have people coming back is a really positive thing. So, you know, of course, just adding little, you know, reminders for them to subscribe, either graphically or verbally. And you don't have to cram it down their throat. All you do is just wait for like a lull in the content and just mention, by the way, you know, this your first time here uh, you know i put out videos like this you know x times a week whatever um so remember to subscribe and then just get on with whatever it was you're talking about um so you don't have to make it a big production you don't have to interrupt their you know experience at all you just kind of squeeze it in there um and it just a really 
passive way to do it is just having a graphic that you can just drop on the screen. And then it's just like a little thing to remind people to subscribe. And it, again, it's not where you're cramming it down their throat. It's just that reminder. And if you're making really good content, that reminder is increasingly more important because they're focused on the content. They're enjoying that content. And that little nudge, it's called a call to action. That little nudge is like a, hey, you're engaged in this content. You might not be thinking about it because you're not a YouTube content creator. So remember to subscribe, right? That's the, uh, that's the idea. Any additional tips there, um, <clears throat> Roberto, for getting more people subscribing to the channel and keeping the views consistent, which was the second part of that, uh, that question. Uh, you want to keep views consistent. You're probably talking about main channel videos. I would say that if you want to run up subscribers and you're covering um, YouTubers and big news stories around YouTubers, um, here's what my thought is. Um, look at large stories that you can cover very qualitatively and probably try to capitalize on a big story that's not going to go away short term. Not a short term story, but a big story once a month. Reference CoffeeZilla or James Johnny as people if you're going to do this and do massive storytelling, higher investment there, possibly on editing, production, storytelling and narrative. But on stories that will still matter, like three months later, people still care about six months later, people still care about. And then in the meantime, do YouTube shorts regularly like massive push on YouTube shorts around little snippets of things that people might care about for a week or two. But if you're publishing a couple of them a week or even a couple of them a day on YouTube shorts, you will have hit a viewer potentially multiple times in a week. And then psychologically after they see you three, five to eight times, it's usually three, five or eight because I've done polls on this. That's when someone subscribes. They don't subscribe on one video a lot of times. And this is why creators who are more consistent do quantity sometimes over quality. They win because the threshold of video that you have to make to get a subscriber off of one viewer is like a 100 hour video investment, like 100 hours into one video. But you can get people to subscribe to your thing if you can get them to binge watch three, five, eight videos. And the thing is you might be able to make those three, five, eight videos in 10 hours instead. And so the thing is what people don't understand about quality over quantity, we're talking about at that point, like sheer hours to make a better product, to make a better mousetrap. However, um, not everyone's 10, 100 or 1000 hours is the same. New YouTubers, their 100 hours might be a big YouTuber's 10 hours, to be honest with you. So that's why quality over quantity doesn't always work. But if you're going to do it, I would say big story once a month that you can milk for three to six months, maybe a live stream every week to catch people up on the latest and greatest news once or twice a week in live streams, because now you can take advantage of YouTube's multi-format and its segmentation. Then you won't feel like the views are that inconsistent because you won't measure videos the same as live streams or the same as shorts. You'll keep them in their own box. And so you could go, maybe you go multiple times a week or daily on shorts to give people snippets of the creators they care about the most, or even backstories on the creators they care about the most. Like you can break up little facts about like Mr. Beast or Air Rack or Lily Singh or whoever, Simone Yurtz, I Justine, whoever. And then you could do stories that are relevant, that will be relevant for like three to six months. You could do a big one once a month, and then you could do live streams twice a week maybe to cover what's happening in real time and basically do those as a reaction format. And I just think as a content strategy, you're touching people enough and making them familiar enough with you and creating binge loops, higher average views per video loops and things of that nature to convert more viewers into subscribers. And someone's asking, why am I walking? I'm on a treadmill, I'm getting 10,000 steps. I'm going to lose, um, I'm going to hopefully uh, within the next 30 days, lose five pounds. So I'm drinking water, eating whole foods, eating starchy vegetables, eating pure proteins, clean eating, cutting out gluten and sugar. And I'm literally just going to live forever now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so really quick also, um, just a heads up, since you are making that type of content, um, there's a YouTube channel called YouTuber News.
I found out about that channel the hard way because I started my news segment and I didn't I didn't actually like look around first. And then I, I started it as YouTuber News and I was like, oh no, there's a YouTube channel called YouTuber News. Um, so, but there is a channel called YouTuber News um, and they cover news about YouTubers as well. So you might just kind of look and see what he's doing over there. Um, doesn't get crushed on his videos. He's got like 140,000 subscribers, I had to look. And, um, but his, his, like he doesn't, like the videos don't seem to do like that like amazing right now, but he has some shorts and stuff that, you know, do well. Some occasional videos will kind of pop off and stuff. So um, there's definitely a market there for that. And um, look at uh, Sunny. Look around a little bit. And look at Sunny V2 in terms of stories that will last for like three to six months. Look at Sunny V2. He also does great thumbnails. Next, we've got Totally Super Toasty trash. says, I stopped posting for two months and came back. It's been one, one, one month now, but my views are low compared to what they were. Will they go back up? Um, eventually, they will. Um, but one thing that you have to keep in mind is one thing that, that matters when it comes to YouTube is recency and viewer history. So when you take breaks like that, you just don't have as much new content out there working on your behalf to bring in some like new people and all that and just kind of keep you fresh in as many people as possible as viewer history. But if people were still responding to the old videos, then they are still there. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll be able to build that back up i wouldn't even worry about it you'll be fine um but that what you're dealing with right now is a very common thing when people take breaks and the funny thing about that is is some people they have a cadence of uploading like once a month and they'll still crush but you know like when when the content they are putting out it's like super high level in terms of you know the response that they get from it which allows them to do that um but depending on where you're at in the process like me if i took a break for a month it would like i'd have a, a really hard rebuild time like it would take me a while to yeah yeah it would take me a while to kind of like you know get everything going again um but like in your uh your case if you're you know if you're in a similar boat like i am um then in that case that recency is like really important so it will go back up you just have to you know you just need that one video to kind of you know go a little bit okay and then you'll be right back uh you'll be right back in there as long as you know you keep putting out you know good you know quality content um one step Super says do hashtags trash. and shorts titles still matter roberto blake YouTube, in terms of rec re uh, best practices for shorts, are still being developed. We've had 18 years to develop best practices for long-form content. We've only had less than three to develop around YouTube shorts. YouTube currently, to my knowledge, in all their reference docs, still recommends putting hashtag shorts in the title. Do I think it's absolutely necessary? No. Is it a best practice I still see among the biggest and fastest growing shorts content creators? Yes. So I don't think it hurts you. I don't think there's a downside to it. I can't guarantee there's an upside, but I can say it doesn't hurt. Next up, we've got Beaver Zero. Um, says celebrating 8.5 thousand. Next stop, 10 thousand. Love you guys. High five and fist bump to you for crossing um, 8.5 thousand subscribers on your channel. Looking forward to you hitting that 10K. Love it. Love it. Love when those come in. Absolutely love it. Um, so let's see here. So um, Oregon Gaming, uh, Oregon Trees Gaming says, is uh, Roberto working out while uh, working out while working out? He is. Yep. D double time in it. <laughs> Productivity. So, uh, <laughs> the next question that we have here um, is from Supersonic Nut Punch. It's funny. Um, they upload every other day. Um, they have a gaming channel. I'm, I'm like giggling. My immaturity is just pouring out yeah. over your channel name. I love it. Um, but they have a gaming channel. The goal of the channel is passive income um, because they love doing it. And then the question is, does uploading multiple videos in one day affect the traffic of the videos? I've noticed when I do this, typically the second video I post usually has much less traffic. Um, so it can because you essentially compete with yourself. Um, so there's some channels that upload like a bunch of videos per day and they're still doing awesome. Um, but you know, if you publish one video and then you publish another video, in a lot of cases, you can look in the real time of the first video that you published and you can actually see the hit coming in on that one. Um, so when it comes to, you know, publishing videos like back to back, I would definitely space them out a little bit um, just so that you can give the one time to like get into the system, get shown to people, have people respond to that one and so on. Roberto, what are your thoughts? Uh, if I wanted to make passive income from gaming, I'd be making Minecraft content. Also, I wouldn't be doing multi uploads a day if I wasn't doing YouTube shorts specifically in that case and stuff like that. But I would do a franchise like either GTA, Minecraft or um, Roblox, possibly right now um, the new Harry Potter Hogwarts game, uh, because I, I, I don't feel I feel like um, it's not that gaming is saturated. It's that gaming is saturated with a lot of low hanging fruit in things people are passionate about that they haven't proven a demand for and that they don't have a business model that they can map to. And this is why gaming content creators struggle. I know gaming content creators with 1 million to 3 million subscribers that are broke and cannot do YouTube full time, despite having 1 million 
the 3 million subscribers because one, gaming is one of the lowest paid CPM niches. So it's not ideal for passive income. What it is, is a lot of people are passionate about gaming and that they think because they see people are popular on YouTube that they can monetize around it. But what is popular doesn't necessarily pay well. And what pays well isn't necessarily popular. And and because you and I both know, Nick, that we get 10 times the CPM that a gaming channel does. But more importantly, we have roughly probably five times to 10 times the monetization options that they have in terms of broader offerings outside yeah. of just ad revenue and sponsorship. So the thing is, you're either passionate about gaming or you're passionate about passive income, in my opinion. But if I were going to try to print money, the way I would probably print money is I would build a brand and I would build it on the back to some degree around a very monetizable IP. And from my perspective, the most monetizable IPs in YouTube gaming right now are probably Minecraft and GTA because you can craft your own unique stories in them to a degree to where you can make something you're known for and be relatively popular compared to just the game itself, to where your thing, and uh, there are plenty of examples of this, but I think that you can build a business model and you can build a membership community to be very strong if you go into something like Minecraft or GTA 5 specifically. People think that's saturated, but what people don't realize is there's unlimited storytelling potential to make a unique story and a unique brand built in the world that that IP allows for because you get to kind of, to a degree with mods, make whatever you want. So you can make your own universe with Minecraft and GTA 5 to a degree, and that makes it much more monetizable because then you can probably build an extremely loyal membership community. You can build your own universe memes. You can build merch on top of this. And to some degree, there are some um, in-game monetization options sometimes. So that's what I would look at. Boom. Derek the money says, guy. usually posts uh, once a week with eight to 10. You know, Bert, I feel like I'm burning calories over here. Like, Just this watching is great, me? Man. Yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, probably burning I feel calories like, like, watching By the time me. we're done, I'm going to be like, whew, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell my girlfriend I worked out today. Um, so uh, <laughs> Vicariously. Derek Weber says, usually post once a week um, with eight to 10 story narrations. Um, worth it to make daily uploads of a second channel to re-upload each story as its own video for discovery. Um, if I'm understanding your question correctly, you do not want to upload the same content to two different YouTube channels. Yeah. Um, that'll get you hit with duplicate content and you risk both channels getting taken down because of it. So you do not, you definitely do not want to do that. Um, worth it to make a daily second channel to re-upload every story as its own. Yeah, I, I, I definitely would not do that. Yeah, you, not. Yeah, because yeah, because that essentially what you're trying to do there is is you're trying to like game the system um in terms of like hey let me you know kind of get this out on a couple different channels and then maybe youtube will recommend it you know differently on each channel if and anything, um, if you do that then you're, then you're putting yourself at risk yeah if upload if you're gonna do super super long form then upload the clips of the super long form onto the same channel in this particular case in this or another different. channel even another yeah. channel or another if it's channel, a podcast yeah. type if it's a podcast type thing an interview type thing then it's another channel and then you can get monetized on that but in terms of what you're talking about, if it's this, if it's stories, maybe it works on the same channel. You could experiment it with it by clipping down 30 seconds of these things that would be good for YouTube Shorts and try that to start to see how the response is. It may not be worth your time to do it for each individual story. So the Shorts is a way to test and verify what even is going to work and what people respond to. Super chat. That junk man, I just hit 30,000. Thanks for the help. High five and fist bump to you for crossing 30,000 subscribers. Well done. It's hard, man. It's hard. You know, like when, 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 when I see people coming in and they're crossing these milestones, I'm like, man, just because I know what's involved, you know, like it's, it's, it's tough, man. Like uh, if it was easy, then everybody that started a YouTube channel not would have big YouTube channels. And that's not how, that's not the case. So like you've done an awesome thing. So, uh, so nice job and, uh, and keep it up. 90% of channels never get to 10,000 subscribers. 90% of channels never get 10,000 subscribers. That doesn't mean YouTube is impossible and that it's a pipe dream. What you have to understand is that most people just don't qualify. Most people don't even meet the basic qualifications. And a lot of people are young and a lot of people work full-time jobs. There's like, so there's qualifications that make it like, if you change five things in your lifestyle, 
then you dramatically increase your odds instead of, oh, I have a 90% failure rate. You change five things in life, and then your failure rate on something goes from 90% to a 30% failure rate just because so few people will change anything about themselves to attain a goal. They want to attain the goal as they are instead of transforming into the person proven that they can attain that goal. So it's qualifications. I say look at YouTube kind of like, hey, to do certain things in life, I have to raise my credit score. If you want to do certain things in life, you got to raise your credit score. If you want to do certain things in life, you have to make a certain amount of money so you can save a certain amount of money so you can have a down payment for a car, down payment for a house. There are like qualifications for the life and career that you want. Jobs have qualifications. Nick, I'm going to write like a, a job qualifying thing for like subscriber counts of like, here are the qualifications to be a 10K YouTuber. Here are the qualifications to be a 50K YouTuber. Here are the qualifications to be a monetized 1000 subscriber YouTuber. Here are the qualifications to be a 100K YouTuber on average. And I'm gonna write them like job requirements because that will help people understand, here's what I need to do to play the game at that level. Cause there's a difference between the entry level job, the, the mid tier job, and then the full time job. And like, that's a career. And I don't think people understand. And I think it's just a culture because they saw a lot of kids they think got lucky. And they don't realize a lot of those kids, they got successful because they never had to do something 40 hours a week that wasn't YouTube. And that's probably one of the biggest difference between being a small creator and being a large creator is if you are young enough or if you already are old enough and you retired or you have a business or you are a freelancer, you can throw 40 hours a week at YouTube. Other creators, working class creators, they get to throw the scraps of 15 to 25 hours a week at YouTube, scraps, and they're doing that running on fumes after working 40 to 60 hours a week already. They're doing Speaking it. of running, yeah. Roberto, um, triathlon with Coach John <laughs> says, uh, Roberto, great dedication. Looks like you could use a coach, and, and, uh, and so do I. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so really quick, uh, for, uh, camp Chris super also, chat. thanks to super chat says, um, any tips for a tight beat channel? I'm almost at 50. So it's going to come down to your beats. It's going to come down to helping people, you know, like recognize that it's that type of beat. Um, one thing when it comes to the tight beat channels, um, just as a heads up, like this is not my personal experience. I've never worked with the tight beat channel. Um, but what I would do in that particular case is I wouldn't go after like Drake. I would go after like Drake type beats. I would go after beats of, um, of people that are not as popular, but are on the come up. So I would hop on like Google trends and I would put in like, you know, um, all of the different, like go to trends.google.com and then start putting in, um, all of the different names of all the people that you're going to be making tight beats of look at the people that have an upward trajectory, but that are not like super crazy popular so that what's going to happen there is you're going to have a lot of people that don't watch content like this that are just going after Drake type beats. And they're trying to, you know, compete with all of these people that already have a established channels that are kind of owning those spots because they make amazing music and they have like, you know, authority channels in the space. And you, instead of going after them, you want to go after the more low hanging fruit, which is the stuff that's on the come up, but not as, as popular. I'll give you one more secret hack for that. Go after TV and movie franchises. Cause a lot of people are going to go after our popular artists and they're not going to go and say, go after like star Wars, Mandalorian, John wick, and that's going to also pop off. And there's not going to be as many people doing that, even though. Yeah. It's a yeah. With the franchise. tight beats, though, like the tight beats, those are mostly like um, like people like like what happens with the tight beat channels is um, like music producers will use those as a way to bring attention to their beats so that they can sell them on like beat stars and stuff like that. So like if they were going to go after like John Wick and, and like those sorts of things, um, then they would need people that were looking for like that type of oh, well, I've you know, seen music, though, which could still, you I've know, seen, open yeah, it up. I've seen it. Speaking of beats, have you seen my, my coffee song yet, Roberto? Um, no, I don't think I have. Oh, dude, I'm going to, I'm going to drop this real quick. Just so you, just so you can see it. So, so, so here we go. Yeah, so this is like if I have to use the bathroom or something instead of just having like a be right back screen. So I have the the Brian G diss track that I drop sometimes, and then this is my uh, coffee one that I uh, that I made. I was telling you that I was putting this together, um, but th this is it.
a minute to get me a Joe. I'll be getting my fix in my kitchen, but look at the logo, the plug for the show. Whoa. It don't matter the flavor, I'm gonna get haters a cup or a pot of the gold. I just need you to hold for a little bit longer. This song ain't a joke, it's a banger. You know where you don't. Well, hang it, you won't, but this thing isn't stopping till it's at the top. And I go back upstairs, man, I hope I don't drop it. I know that it's hot. It might seem one's enough, but apparently not. Take a cinnamon shot. Mix it up on the spot. Give it a try. You might like it a lot. Fiending for caffeine. I need it in my mug. I need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiending for caffeine. I need it in my mug. I need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiending for caffeine. I need it in my mug. I need to hit the coffee maker, get another cup. Fiending for caffeine. I need it in my mug. Cheers, put your mugs up here. Put your cups up here. Here, put your tumblers up here. Now drink it, drink it. Cheers, put your cups up here. Put your mugs up here. Put your tumblers up here. Now drink it, drink it. Drink it. It's that good. That's it in a nutshell. It's so on good. my end, it was all like laggy and like I couldn't even like listen to it. It was just like stuck mm. on screenshots. Were you able to were you able to hear? Oh, it? I was able to enjoy that. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. 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 Yeah, that, that's my taking a break song. Uh for uh, you know, for going away. I got my, you know, branding stuff in there, all that good stuff. Super fun. Uh loved putting that together. <laughs> So uh, really quick, we had another uh, another super chat came in from Jessica Dating. Super says, just showing dating. love, um, darling Roberto, when are you going to let me interview you about your dating life on my channel? Um, next time I'm in Florida, uh, we could absolutely uh, talk about my non-existent dating life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, non-existent dating life. Yeah. There you go. All right. So uh, So we got that one taken care of. So um, on that note, um, I just want to thank everybody for hanging out here. So as soon as I um, hit the button here, what's going to happen is my brother um, D and Daniel Batal are streaming um, over on the StreamYard channel right now doing channel reviews. These are free to where basically you just put in a hashtag and then they pick, you know, whoever it is out of the chat and then they pull something up and then they, you know, give you like a, you know, a quick review of that particular, you know, section of your channel. So as soon as I hit the end button here, it's going to automatically send you over there. So you don't have to do anything. You can just kind of sit back and watch. Um, but on that note, I do want to remind everybody that we have a bunch of resources down in the description um, for you, you know, a bunch of helpful stuff for content creators. You can find more about Roberto at awesomecreatoracademy.com. Or if you just search Roberto Blake, you know, everything, you know, will all, all roads will lead to Rome there. Um, but if you're a new content creator, you know, we've been talking about a lot of, you know, things during the stream. And some of it might seem like, you know, like there's, you know, tons of stuff you got to do. And there is kind of, but just remember, just like anything else in life, you're just putting one foot in front of the other as you go through the process. And before you know it, you'll also be one of those creators that are coming in and they're like, hey, I crossed this milestone, crossed this milestone, this is happening, like those types of things. So just, you know, keep your nose down, keep doing the thing and um, and have a great rest of your weekend. And I will see you next Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. So have a great uh, rest of your weekend. And Roberto, of course, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your expertise. Super appreciate it as always, my friend. And uh, we will Your see you... And and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next time.